Leave a like on this video right now to receive your very own nothing. What's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. And just imagine that you're at camp, all excited to meet your new friends. And when you get to your cabin, you meet your bunkmate. And then you take a big ol' whiff of air, and you literally keel over from the smell of your bunkmate. And uh, yeah, you're just sitting there, and you just you're just questioning your life at this point. So yeah, this is a story I'll be telling today. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into it. So anyways, we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Brandon. So anyways, Brandon is going away to sleepaway camp, and he's pretty excited. He gets there, his parents drop him off, and right away, he's just excited to meet a whole new group of people. Brandon's gone to sleepaway camp before, but this is a whole new sleepaway camp to him, and he's not coming in with anyone because in the past he's gone to sleepaway camp where he's known people, and this is going to be the first time where he's gone in and he doesn't know anybody. He's excited to meet a whole new group of people. He's excited to meet his bunk mate, his cabin mate, the people in his group, the people he'll meet at camp. He's just really excited in general. So this is like an overnight wilderness type camp. Um, it's pretty popular in the United States if you guys aren't from here or that isn't a thing where you guys are. In fact, most of the camp stories I've told have had to do with like overnight wilderness camp. So that's just a testament for how popular they are. But anyways, let's Let's just jump right into it as, you know, uh, Brandon makes his way to his cabin as he is greeted by the camp counselor and the other people that will be in his group. There's a few people walking over to the cabin with Brandon as well as the camp counselor. The camp counselor tells him that people have been coming in since 2 this afternoon. Brandon came there at 4.30 in the afternoon. And the camp counselor basically says, hey, like people have been filtering in, or not filtering in, they've been trickling in. People will be still coming until 6. So, you know, you'll meet the last new person out around 6 or whatever. Then at 8, we're going to have a big bonfire as like, to get everyone to like just to initiate everyone to get them to know everybody stuff like that and uh you know at this point you know brandon kind of says hey is my bunk mate there yet are the people in my cabin there and you know the the camp counselor is like uh let me take a look at the list and as they're walking over he pulls out his clipboard he's like yes and then he says the name but we're gonna call him minecraft kid because he brought one shirt and one hoodie and they both happen to be minecraft related so we're going to call him Minecraft Kid. So he looks it up and he says, oh yeah, your bunkmate, his name's Minecraft Kid. Obviously says his real name, but for the story, we're going to say Minecraft Kid. Oh yeah, your bunkmate Minecraft Kid is actually there right now. So you'll be able to greet him when you go in there. So at this point, Brandon was pretty excited because, you know, his friend was, or his new friend potentially turns out not to be the case, but whatever, right? He goes up there and, you know, he opens the cabin door. He walks in and he enters the room. Boom! It's like he's hit with like a glass wall, dude. He breaks through the glass. He just it's like he he walked into a thing of bricks. A thing of bricks. The smell is so pungent, so intense, so putrid that it's unlike anything he's ever smelled before. It's like he went inside of a cow's anus, dude. Okay, that's a little graphic. But anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, Brandon is just so taken off guard. He basically collapses and disintegrates. But uh yeah, he looks and the kid above him has already taken top bunk, and he's sitting there, and he's in a little creeper hoodie, right? He's like, what's up, man? My name is Minecraft Kid. Obviously says his real name, but says, I'm just going to insert Minecraft Kid instead. And immediately, Brandon is like, hey, man, how are you doing? Yeah, but uh, anyways, he's like, hey, man, what's up? My name is Brandon. Uh, it's nice to meet you. And uh, so, yeah, Brandon sits down on his bed. He has his suitcase or whatever, more like a backpack because he didn't bring that much. He's like unpacking all of his stuff. And while he's unpacking all of his stuff, he's just kind of thinking to himself, man, I mean, one would believe that by now, by this time right now, I would have gotten used to the smell. Like one would have believed that at this point, I would have gotten used to the smell, but it really does not seem like I'm getting used to the smell right now. So, yeah, uh, this, I, 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 like, yeah, this is, this is not great. I am not sure how I feel about this besides, oh dear God, this is my life for the next week. And, uh, that was his life for the next week. And, uh, yeah, the, the night, the night only gets worse because, like, the Minecraft kid is literally just sitting above him, just, like, talking with other people coming in. And there's, like, uh, there's, like, other people to walk through, but this room there's only one bunk. Most of the other rooms have multiple bunks, but this room, thankfully for the other campers, just has one bunk. So it's literally just Brandon, 
and the Minecraft kid stuck together. Unfortunately for Brandon, right? So, <laughs> you know, Brandon was like, all right, I still smell this. The Minecraft kid jumps down from like the top bunk, right? And he lands on the ground and he lands facing away. And the Minecraft kid was not the smartest man on planet Earth. Why do I say that? Well, for many reasons. But specifically because the Minecraft kid only brought one pair of shorts and the pair of shorts he brought were white. Dude, even myself, who well, I find myself a pretty clean individual, you know, I actually wash my sheets in college, which is, I think, better than 50% of the guys here, or just guys in general, all right? That's pretty good. Even myself, white shorts are just dangerous, bro. It is just dangerous to have white shorts or white underwear. Even if you're a clean individual, I mean, you just get them dirty, right? It's just not worth it. But the Minecraft kid had a pair of what one would assume were white shorts at one point. However... There was a uh, pretty, a pretty unfortunately placed stain. There was a butt stain right on his butt. It was brown. It was disgusting. And Brandon was literally on the, view, on the verge of puking out of his nostrils at this point. It was just so disgusting. It was so terrible. And, and this kid also smelled pretty bad as well on the way down. It's like on the way down, he just had a whiff of scent. Yeah, so that was one of the toughest nights. So that, okay, eventually they go out to the campfire. Brandon meets a lot of other people he's pretty chill with. And overall, he's actually having a really great time at the camp, except for when he has to go back to his room. It's like every single time that Brandon returns to his room, he basically drops to his knees gagging. However, right, um, the next day comes around. And the, and the next day is the first actual day of camp. So this is the day where they actually are like, I don't know, uh, doing activities, doing whatever, right? And one of the first activities that they did campus-wide, right, as the whole camp, was a big game of uh, hide-and-seek. However, this was a game of hide-and-seek in pairs. And the thing is, uh, I, Brandon learned pretty quickly that this camp wanted you to make friends with random people, but they also wanted you to leave being really close to one person. They thought their kind of philosophy was, you know, why be good friends with a lot of people when you can be great friends with one person? One good friend is better than 10 acquaintances. I genuinely kind of do agree with that. However, in this case, that was bad. You know why? Because you know how they chose this one person that you were going to be super quote unquote close with? They just made it your bunk mate. So yeah, this big game of hide and seek, you were told that you had a partner that you had to hide with and that partner was your bunk mate. Brandon already knew that this was going to be bad. So Brandon goes and finds the Minecraft kid and the Minecraft kid is getting super into it. He was like, dude, I play this mini game in Minecraft where I hide. I think he was doing like a what was that? What, what's the high pixel mini game where there's like one person who's secretly it or whatever and uh, like murder mystery? Yeah, he's like plays that all the time. So he's like, I'm really good at this because you do something in a video game, you're getting good in real life. Because if you're good at Wii tennis, then you're great at regular tennis, obviously. But anyways, uh, they start walking around, and the person who's it, or it's actually like probably like four or five pairs since it's the entire campus who's it, they start counting down from like 90 seconds, so they got a lot of time. But the Minecraft, but Brandon the Minecraft kids start going around trying to find a spot. So Brandon is really hoping that they'll hide in a place where him and the Minecraft kid do not have to be physically that close because Brandon does not know if he can survive being physically that close to the Minecraft kid. It's already kind of a close call having him be in such close quarters anyways. So to have him that close to the Minecraft kid, it's already a bit of a stretch. I'm not going to lie, right? I'm not going to lie. It's already a bit of a stretch. So they're looking around and Brandon sees this like this house, a little tiny playhouse, right? It's a miniature house that was like made for, I don't know. It was like made for like messing around in, and it's like kind of like a cool art piece or whatever. And Brandon's like, oh dude, we should hide in there because they could hide in separate corners of the house or whatever, or behind the wall separately. But the Minecraft kid's like, dude, that's a not a good place. It's like too obvious, but you know what a place that isn't obvious? There. He points to a bush. And yes, the bush would have been a really good hiding spot, but there was really only room for one and a half individuals, which means they would have had to really cram. And the Minecraft kid's like, dude, we're going to have to really cram in there, but it's going to be so worth it. At this point, Brandon is just like, oh no, dude, no way. And the Minecraft kid's like, 
like, okay, he doesn't say that out loud, but Minecraft kid's like, hurry, hurry, because the people that were counting down of, are like, 10, 9, 8, and, you know, Brandon's like, okay, how bad can this really be? Brandon hops in the bush, and that's when the Minecraft kid hops in the bush after him, but the Minecraft... <laughs> Oh my god. Sorry, I'm... <laughs> Reading this story is kind of paining me. The Minecraft kid jumps in butt first. <laughs> and he's... <laughs> uh, strap, in, strap in, boys and girls. This is, this is quite a story. He jumps in butt first and smudges his butt against, against Brandon's shirt. And Brandon... Uh, okay, so first of all, that happens. Second of all... He's now in a cloud of, like, actual toxicity. Like, he's in a cloud of, like, you're taking... You're, you're, you basically have the Minecraft, Minecraft, Minecraft wither effect. You're gonna die, bro. You're gonna die. So Brandon's kind of just sitting there. And he's, like, trying to breathe in. And he's trying to, like, lean his head out to breathe in. And Minecraft kid's like, don't put your head out, dude. You're gonna get caught. So Brandon's like... <laughs> Like, he's actually choking up at this point. It is a struggle. It is hard. So at this point, Brandon, it's been about 30 seconds. And Brandon is like, dude, there is no way I'm going to survive this if I last in here for another, like, five seconds. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Minecraft down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. I'll try and heart as many comments as I possibly can that say Minecraft. And if you want to support the channel, literally the best possible thing that you can do for me or the channel in general, the community we have, the first best thing is finish this video. Watch it all the way through. That helps out more than you can imagine. And then the next thing that helps out a ton is when you have time, maybe right after this video, maybe later, binge watch my older videos. Just go ahead and watch a bunch of my videos in the background while you're doing something. And let me know in the comment section right now, what do you do while watching my videos? I'm genuinely super curious and I love reading it. And just to say thank you, I will try and heart and reply to as many comments that tell me what you guys do while binge watching my videos in the background. Anyways, let's get right back to it. So yeah, Brandon is now, first of all, he just got butt stained. He got butt stained by this kid, whatever that even is supposed to mean. And he's sitting in a cloud of stench and he can't take it anymore. So he falls out of the bush. He pretends to lose his balance because they're kind of sitting in a very awkward position because they have to really cram in there. So Brandon pretends to fall out of the bush. And like he falls out and the guy is like, oh, found you guys or whatever. Minecraft kid is like, dude, why did you do that? And Brandon's like, haha, man, sorry. I lost my balance. It was a really good hiding spot though. Too bad I just lost my balance, man. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Anyways, so they uh, skip ahead a little bit. Uh, the rest of the day is actually pretty good. Remember, like this sounds like a horror story. Brandon actually had a overall really great experience at this camp, which means that the rest of the camp was so awesome that it countered, <laughs> counteracted how bad this part was. But anyways, it's the end of the day again, and they get back to their cabin, and Brandon is just, like, dreading going back to his cabin, because he knows that he's going to have to survive the night. This is, like, Five Nights at Freddy's, but every single night is, like, 20-20-20 mode, dude. Like, this is a struggle, bro. This is night five. This is night six, a secret new night invited, invented just to make it more difficult. Yeah, but anyways, he gets there. And he sees the worst possible thing ever. He sees something so terrifying, so horrifying, that not the, the, the ring is just like a little goofy kids movie in comparison. There is nothing scarier. The dark web has nothing that would scare him compared to this. Lit like a hacker could literally say, I'm in your house and appear out of the closet with a massive machete and a Gatling gun, dude. It doesn't matter. It's not as scary as what this kid Brandon saw. What did Brandon see, you might be asking? Well, Brandon saw the Minecraft kid. Little Stinkers, right? That's, that's not his new name, but yeah. The Minecraft kid sitting on his bed. Brandon had white sheets. So Brandon knew immediately that whatever damage was going to be done, which was going to be extensive, colossal damage, like the whole thing was, he's probably gonna have to burn his sheets when he gets home, but he knew that the damage that he's gonna see, that like the damage that will be, will be done, he will see. He will see the damage and then he'll have to sleep in it. So the Minecraft kid is sitting there. He's like, what's good, dude? Like, I was thinking we could have a little debrief about the, uh, 
about the hide and seek thing so that later in the week when we do it again, we can do it even better. So yeah, there was like two hide and seek events or whatever. The first one they did on the first day, which happened that day. And there was also a final hide and seek event that happened on the last day. And like the winners got a special prize or something. So bunk mates would like talk to each other. It was like a, it was really fun in general. Maybe not if you got the Minecraft kid as your mate or, or, as, or as your partner or whatever, right? But in general, it was pretty fun. So the Minecraft kid was talking to him about strategies and how to balance better. And he was like, I was learning when I was playing Minecraft or whatever. But the thing is, uh, Brandon was not paying attention. Because Brandon was simply just, you know, just thinking about, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, 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 no. This cannot be happening. The Minecraft kid is stinking up my bed. Am I going to sleep on the floor? Am I going to sleep on the roof? Am I going to sleep in the river and hope I just drown at this point? Like, what am I actually going to do? Am I going to sleep standing up? Am I going to just walk home, walk 12 hours back home, and sleep in my own bed? Like, at this point, what am I, what am I going to do? So eventually, the Minecraft kid is done talking strategy. He's like, all right, let me know what you think. And Brandon's like, uh, cause he wasn't paying attention. He was freaking out the whole time. He was like, uh, that sounds good, dude. Like, uh, yeah, no, uh, sounds good. And the Minecraft kid's like, okay, cool. And he gets up and he walks up to his bunk. The second the Minecraft kid walks up, Brandon's eyes immediately look right where the Minecraft kid was sitting. And sure enough, there was a big old butt stain. And Brandon was like sick to his stomach. He was gonna puke. He was weak because yes, the one place he could call home at this camp, his bed, his nice, beautiful bed that was already kind of contaminated from just like stink that fell from the top bunk down, had a big, massive butt stain on it. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. So Brandon got close and he just took off his sheet. He literally just removed the sheets. He was going to sleep on a bare mattress. He checked. Brandon actually checked to see if the butt stain leaked through. Nope, thankfully. He was not going to have to sleep on the bed springs. <laughs> Dude, imagine like it just seeped through and he has to sleep on the bed springs for the next four days or whatever, or four nights. So he takes off his sheets, just puts them in his bag. He's like, these are done. Like these are, these are done, right? Yeah, that night was, uh, it was tough because Brandon's like, if this kid sits on my bed again, I bet I could flip over the mattress. But if he sits on my bed a third time, I'm actually going to have to sleep in the bed springs. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not trying to do that. So anyways, the next day comes around, and we're just going to skip the day because it was normal, it was good, Brandon had a lot of fun, didn't sleep that well because he's like inhaling toxic, perf toxic fumes or whatever the entire night, but eventually they do a little, what they call a little check-in. So the camp counselor walks in, and he's basically saying like, hey, just want to make sure, because look, a lot of these, I mean, th these are kids, right? Brandon was 15, Minecraft Kid was 14. These are kids that are away from their parents, not having their parents check in on them every five seconds to make sure that they're functioning. So they're just like, all right, you know, you guys are like changing your clothes every day. You're taking a shower. Like, and one of the camp counselors was like, I'm going to have not watch you take a shower. That would be very sus. The camp counselor vented if he did that. <laughs> I just, I, I'm a grown man. And I just said that. Anyways, uh, you know, the camp counselor is not, I'm going to watch you shower. <laughs> but he was like, I'm going to like wait until you go into the shower, take a shower, change back into your clothes and walk out here. Because a camp counselor one day was like, this cabin smells. I was going to say reeks, but that has different con connotations, right? He was like, this, this cabin smells and, like, I, I'm not going to, like, I know that you guys have not been showering. And, like, the other kids were being kind of stinky, too. But they were on a whole different level, right? They might have smelled a little unpleasant. But they didn't smell, like, the insides. You, you, you know that, you know, the Star Wars, uh, the fifth movie, uh, Revenge of the... No, 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 no. Att uh, Empire Strikes Back, when, like, uh, Han Solo has to save Luke by cutting open that animal. Yeah, the, the Minecraft kid probably smelled, like, the inside rotting guts of that animal, right? Anyways, though, so the camp counselor comes around and he's just kind of checking in. He's like, all right, Brandon, go take a shower. I'm going to wait till you're done. So Brandon goes in, he takes a shower, whatever, right? Comes out smelling nice and clean. And he looks at the Minecraft kid and the Minecraft kid looks at him back. And the camp counselor's like, this room's pretty bad smelling. and I want to make sure you guys are taking your showers. So Minecraft kid's like, okay, I'll take a shower. He goes in, turns on the water and like, I mean, okay, 
Brandon doesn't know this, but he knows for a fact that this kid did not shower. Allegedly, the Minecraft kid goes in there, turns on the shower water, puts his head in for a second to make it look like his head is wet, so it looks like he took a shower, and, like, just sat there for, like, five minutes when the water was running. Turns off the water, comes out in the same clothes, and the camp counselor is like, you didn't change your clothes. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, 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 I just have the same pair. I just really like this creeper shirt, so I have two of the same ones. The truth is, the Minecraft kid was bluffing. If the camp counselor said, hey, can I see the other creeper shirt? His, you know, the lie would have been up. The gig would have been up, essentially, right? But yeah, um, he, uh, the Minecraft kid was almost cleaned, but nope, he's a Minecraft kid. What did you guys expect? So the next day was where things got a little bit interesting. The Minecraft kid comes up to Brandon at lunch, and Brandon and the Minecraft kid sat at different tables because the Minecraft kid met people that he was more friends with, like other people who played stuff that he liked, like Minecraft or Roblox or something. And Brandon was more of a sports guy, so his friends were more like sports related or whatever. But one day the Minecraft kid comes up to Brandon when he's sitting at his table, and he's like, hey man, I need your expertise. And you know, Brandon's like, yeah, what's good? And he's like, dude, I really, th I want to ask out Judy. And Judy was this girl who was 17 and was beautiful. She was like, she was like, everyone thought that like this girl was super hot. And she was also much older than them too. So immediately that's like, that already gives like, like plus 10 to whatever. She, if she was a one, she would have been an 11, right? Cause she was like older and these kids were like, oh my God or whatever. But yeah, she was kind of just known as like, the girl or whatever. But uh, first of all, a million reasons. One, Minecraft kid needs to take a shower if he wants a girlfriend. Two, he's three years younger than her. Four, three, they've never spoken before. And four, it's just simply not gonna happen. However, Brandon didn't wanna be a massive jerk, right? And he was like, all right, man, like, why do you wanna like ask her out? Minecraft kid's like, because she's beautiful. And uh, he's like, yeah, okay, I, I agree with that. Have you ever spoken to her before? Minecraft kid's like, well, no, but we're going to go on a date, so I'll speak to her on the date. And Brandon's like, you guys are going on a date? For a second, he was legitimately like, oh, my God. Like, I never thought I would see crazier, but oh, my God. And he's like, well, no, I have to ask her out on a date first, but I was wondering if you could go talk to Judy and see how she'd feel, you know? And uh, at this point, Brandon was like, eh, okay. Like, it's interesting. Like, I'll definitely be entertained by whatever happens, but, uh, okay. And remember, the Minecraft kid was not a bad kid. Even though he smelled bad, <laughs> that does not make him an... That, just ma does, that does not mean that he was a bad individual, okay, guys? Be nice. Um, be much nicer than I am while I'm telling the story. So, Brandon already kind of knows the answer, but he wants to go up, and he's like, you know what? Maybe. I'll be the one to see, because maybe Judy likes girls three, or guys three years younger than her that smell bad. Maybe she's kind of a cougar. Who knows, dude? So he goes up to Judy. He's like, hey, like, Judy. Because they'd, they'd spoken, like, once or twice. I think they had a camp activity together or something like that. So they were friendly. They weren't friends by any means. But they were friendly. You know what I mean? They were cool. And, uh, you know, he goes up. He's like, hey, so I think I might already know the answer to this question. But, you know, my cabin mate, you know, he thinks you're, you're very nice looking. And he was wondering if you wanted to go on a date with him. And she's like, oh, who's your cabin mate? Because, you know, you know, <laughs> Brandon always hung out with like the, you know, the sports guys and the athletic baseball guys. And Judy was like, oh, maybe it's one of those 16 year old, like uh, the baseball guys with their like, uh, I don't know, their long hair, whatever the, what are those cuts called? I'm actually being an idiot. The mullets, oh my God, my mullet daddy ears. I don't know, something stupid, right? And uh, not saying mullets are stupid. I couldn't pull it off, maybe you can. And uh, Brandon's like, well, well, about that. So, do you know, and then says the name of the Minecraft kid. And she's like, huh? What? Because she probably already had, like, a few of, like, Brandon's friend, friends in her mind. And she's already, already, like, imagining situations with them or whatever, right? And he's like, ah, the guy over there. And Brandon points to the Minecraft kid. And she's like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, dude, it's so, it's so painful. She's like, no, man. I had a, I had a, like, a, uh, I was in a group with him. 
dude is so stinky. I can, I can smell, I can probably smell him from here. God, he reeks. He's awful. Judy's not the nicest girl, right? And Brandon's like, oh, I'm going to take that as a no. And Judy's like, yes, take that as a mega no. So Brandon walks back over and Brandon's thinking to himself, Minecraft kid's a good kid. I'm not going to be that guy, but I do need to make sure it's clear to him. And Brandon goes up and says, hey, you know, Judy's very flattered by what you buy, like the offer, right? But she actually already has a boyfriend. And she said, though, and he kind of made this up, but like, whatever, lol. He's like, you know, you know, she did safe, you know, maybe in the future, you never know. But right now she's a boyfriend and she can't really be doing that. And the Minecraft kid's like, mm, okay, I might still ask her out either way. And Brandon's like, no, 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 you should, you should not do that. Please do not do that for your own sake. So yeah, uh, Brandon was, you know, a good guy in that situation and didn't let the Minecraft kid get into any, any nonsense. But everything would change that night. That night was quite a night. So he gets back and uh, Brandon goes back to his bunk expecting to see the Minecraft kid there. The Minecraft kid is not there. No one is never not in their cabin by nighttime. And it turns out that, you know, you know Brandon goes to sleep and the Minecraft kid is nowhere to be found. The Minecraft kid is quite, in fact, missing in action. So the next day, you know, he goes up to his camp counselor early in the morning when he wakes up, as they all have, they kind of have breakfast as a, uh, as a group, and then they go off and disperse. And they can have lunch with whoever, but breakfast they have together. And he says, hey, like, I, I didn't see Minecraft kid last night. And the camp counselor kind of has a look on his face. He's like, yeah, the Minecraft kid uh, is, is not in the camp anymore. And he's like, what? He's like, why? And the camp counselor counselor's like, I can't really disclose that. But he said that he really loved having you as a roommate. And, you know, Brandon both felt concerned, but also, like, felt a little bad because he was like, oh, my God, this kid's the worst. But uh, that at, at breakfast, Brandon was really curious. What happened to the Minecraft kid, Mr. Stink himself? And one of the kids, like, leaned over to Brandon and said, Hey, like, meet me after breakfast. I have answers. And, like, Brandon immediately knew. Like, they both just knew what they were talking about. So after breakfast, Brandon goes up to him. He's like, dude, like, what happened to my, like, uh, my roommate? He's like, so, like, this is, like, what I heard. I overheard some stuff. And, like, I also heard some stuff from other people. Like, none of this is 100% fact, but I'm pretty sure this is correct. And Brandon's like, yeah, yeah, just tell me what's up. And he said... Basically, there was like a health inspection, like a random one, and they found the Minecraft kid stuff. They deemed it as a, <laughs> as, a, as a safety risk for everyone else. And they went up to the Minecraft kid and basically told him that if he did not take an actual shower right now, that they were going to have to remove him from camp. Apparently, the Minecraft kid said no and that he liked his, his natural aroma. And after that, you know, they basically told him that he could no longer go to the camp and that, and like, apparently like he just left a pile of his clothes around and it was just so putrid. And it was like, they, they like tested it or something. They thought it was actually going to like spread diseases or something. So they asked him to leave. His parents picked him up like hours later or whatever. And, uh, yeah. So that's why. And Brandon's like, wow. Like, are you serious? And the kid's like, well, that's just like, I overheard bits of it. I overheard the camp counselor talking with like one of the health inspector people that worked at the camp, as well as talking to like the head of the camp. Like everyone else was back, like was out doing their events. But I went back because like I wasn't feeling that good. I had a stomach ache. So I went back to my cabin to sit down and I overheard them talking with each other. And that's basically what they said. And Brandon was like, wow, that's actually crazy, right? Like, dang. So anyways, at the day, the final day of hide and seek, you know, Brandon has to do it alone. But Brandon, you know, in the spirit of Minecraft Kid, he knew that Minecraft Kid wanted him to win. So Brandon decided to buckle in and just lock in and win this for Minecraft Kid, win this for Mr. Stink himself. So Brandon... He found the spot, the perfect spot that he knew that Minecraft Kid would have wanted him to win, right? That would have, the, the spot that Minecraft Kid would have wanted him to go to. He goes in it, he's perfect, he's silent, he's still, and Brandon, he wins the championship. And he dedicates his victory 
to his former roommate, Minecraft Kid. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy What's it. up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. And today we have a story of a Minecraft kid who ends up biting the subscriber who is his babysitter just because the subscriber couldn't answer the Minecraft kid's uh, Minecraft trivia. And the Minecraft kid was like, you're disrespecting Minecraft. <laughs> and takes a chunk out of his arm, bro. It's a crazy story. I know you en you'll enjoy it, so sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's jump right into the story. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Nico, because I'm just going down through my middle school friend name list. And uh, yes, yeah, so anyways, Nico had to babysit this kid. He was the kid of a mom that Nico's friends was really good friends with. So Nico's like, dang, I got to do this, bro. And his mom's like, yeah, dude, you got to babysit this kid. Was Nico trying to do it? No. He also wasn't even being paid that much. Like his mom's like, you're going to be paid $10, which look, $10 is $10, but $10 for like five hours, bro, that's not very good. Like that's, that's like two bucks an hour, man. That's some, that's some like not even close to minimum wage type, but whatever, right? You know, Nico's like, I got to do this for my mom, basically. It's her friend's son. So Nico's driven over by his mom and is dropped off, and Nico gets to the front door of the kid that he has to babysit. We're just going to call him the Minecraft kid. It's not super clear right now, but you'll see pretty soon why I call him the Minecraft kid. So anyways, the Minecraft kid's mom gets to the door. And she's like, oh, welcome in. I'm so happy you could do this. I'm sorry I was so last minute. Like, thank you so much. Like, you and your mom are a lifesaver here. And Nico's like, yeah, don't worry about it. I got you. Like, uh, where's your son? And she's like, oh, oh, he's, he's upstairs. And all of a sudden you hear, oh, oh. Like, okay, I'm not doing a really good job, but just, like, kind of think of, like, the Minecraft zombie sound. Like, the... Ooh, I don't know. Like last time I said the zombie moaning, but then that got really weird because you guys were weirdos in the comments. The zombie groaning, okay? Is that better? I don't even know that's better. Zombie noises. We're just going to say Minecraft zombie noises so you guys can't be weird in my comment section. God! Leave a like for uh, one, all the brain cells I'll lose during the story. But yeah, he's like, he hears kind of this zombie moaning noise. Uh, this zombie noise. And, uh, you know, Nico's like, kind of looks at you know the minecraft kid's mom in a look of confusion and the minecraft kid's mom is like oh yeah so i gotta explain this to you and nico for a split second was thinking like oh is she gonna explain that her son was bitten by a zombie from a secret cia like project and that he's an actual real life zombie and for that she'll pay him five dollars more to deal with him but no she basically goes on to explain that you know her son the minecraft kid has started to watch and play way too much Minecraft, and he once died recently in Minecraft to a zombie, and ever since then, he thinks that he is actually a zombie. Yeah, the Minecraft kid thinks since he was, like, killed by a zombie in-game that he has become a Minecraft zombie in real life. But yeah, all he does, I mean, he basically is a zombie, bro. He's playing video games all day, 24-7, at 3 in the morning, at 3 in the afternoon. Minecraft every day. Look, Minecraft is a pretty good game, but don't be playing it 24 hours a day, bro. Yeah, but this kid basically is like, you hear, whoa, more like Minecraft zombie noises. And the mom's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. He might be a little difficult, but, you know, he's a good kid at heart. And you hear, oh, oh. <laughs> and she's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, right? Like, not much I can do about that. And Nico's like, oh, that's fine. Like, back when I was a kid, like, I used to play Minecraft with my friends. Like, that was actually back in the day when it, like, just came out, too. It was, like, a really cool multiplayer game or whatever. Like, you know, I, that's a good game. Like, I, I love it. I respect it. Like, I can understand why your son likes it so much. And that's when you hear the zombie noises getting, getting a little bit louder. And that's when you hear, see this kid, because he's like on the second floor. He starts crawling down the stairs in all fours, which I don't know why he was crawling. It's not like he thought he was a Minecraft spider. He thought he was a Minecraft zombie. But either way, kid is crawling down on all fours. And he's like, <laughs> trying to do that, like the zombie hiss noise. Like, <laughs> I'm obviously doing a terrible job, but just deal with me, right? And he, he kind of like crawls down the stairs and, and the, the Minecraft kids, or I should say the Minecraft zombie kid, his mom's like, oh, Minecraft kid, here he is, Nico. The, like, like Minecraft kid, obviously says his real name, but Minecraft kid, I would like you to meet Nico. He'll be your babysitter. And Nico looks at this kid who's on all fours, who's in like a creeper shirt and is like, mo <laughs> he's doing like Minecraft noises like, or zombie noises like, oh, 
kind of looks at him and says, hey, man, what's up? And this kid looks at, like, Nico and goes, whoa, whoa. And, and the Minecraft kid's mom's like, sorry about that. You know, he's still in his zombie era right now. He still thinks he's a zombie right now. So sorry about that, bro. And Nico's like, all right, that's fine, whatever. And the Minecraft kid says something in English for once. And he's like, I heard, like, I heard you like Minecraft. And at this point, like, the Minecraft kid's mom's like, Nico, I'm so sorry. I really got to go right now. But it sounds like you guys are going to start a nice conversation. So I'm just going to say goodbye. And Nico's like, oh, what? Oh, okay. And she just, like, walks out the door. I think Loki, she wasn't even going anywhere. She just needed a break from her son. So she's probably, like, getting in the car, driving around the corner, and then taking a power nap for four hours. Or maybe she's actually doing something. Who knows? But the Minecraft kid's like, I heard that you liked Minecraft. And Nico's like, yeah, I used to play it a long time ago with my friends. And the Minecraft kid is like, you better not be lying to me, are you? And Nico's like, what? Like, why would I be lying right now? Like, that makes no sense. Like, yeah, I'm not lying. Like, what are you saying? He's like, good. Well, that means that you can answer my Minecraft trivia questions. And Nico's like, oh, well, dude, I'm actually not that good. Like, I used to play a little bit with my friends back in the day. He's like, silence! You already said that you didn't lie, so you should be able to answer these easily. And, you know, Nico's like, oh, okay, like, sure. Nico was kind of expecting that the questions were going to be like, when you start the game, what is the character you can choose? Like, what are the characters you can choose between? Which is like Steve and Alex. Like, I mean, maybe, like, he didn't even know about Alex at this time because he only played when Steve was the option. Loki, uh, like, I, I, I bet Nico only played, like, Minecraft Pocket Edition Lite or something. That was the game I used to play back when I was, like, 12 or whatever. Fire game. It was free, too. But anyways, yeah, so, you know, the Minecraft kid, instead of asking him really basic questions, his first question, he's like, First, you must answer all three correctly to be granted access to the dungeon. Which, I guess the dungeon was, like, his room or whatever, so he could show off his, like, Lego Star Wars stuff. But he's like, First question! When you play someone in Minecraft PvP, what is what are the three items that are most useful? First of all, that's kind of a subjective question, but like Nico was like Minecraft PvP. He's like when you fight someone in Minecraft, player versus player, obviously. And Nico's like, uh, well, I think a sword's pretty good. And Nico was right on that. Then he's like, uh, uh, like, uh, like steak and blocks. The Minecraft kid's like, me wrong. You want a fishing rod for proper knockback, and then you also want golden apples for fast recovery. You are wrong in your first question. Let's see if you can redeem yourself. Question number two. And at this point, Nico was kind of just thinking to himself, like, bro, I don't know this game, bro. Like, what, what do you expect from me, dude? I don't know this game. And I've told you many times, I don't know this game. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, I like, I don't play this game. This is like someone who like has played Call of Duty once and then eight years later, they go to their final exam in math and it's like the teacher's like, all right guys, whatever you learn this year, like the quadratic equations, the, all the differential calculus, you don't even need to worry about that. We just gotta, I just gotta ask you technical questions about Call of Duty Modern Warfare. It's like, wait, hold up a second. How do you expect me to get these answers, bro? But yeah, so he's like, meh, next question. You have a chance to redeem yourself. Ever since version 1.7.6, I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying stuff at this point. He's like, what is like, at what Y level do diamonds spawn at most? I think the answer is like 15 to 20. That might be totally wrong, but that used to be the case. It was like a little bit above bedrock. I remember this. And at this point, um, <laughs> Nico didn't even like understand how many layers there were. I think when he played back in the day, like, it didn't even spawn all that way down. So he's like, uh, uh, isn't it, like, right below the surface? Which is kind of just proof that, like, he has not played this game in a long time. And the Minecraft kid's like, no! Diamonds are not just below the surface! That's ridiculous! He's, like, honestly having a bit of a freaking breakdown, meltdown, freakout moment right now. Which they're all kind of just like, bro, what, what's going on right now? And uh, Nico's like, okay, bro, like, I obviously don't know the game that well. Like, maybe we can talk about something else. He's like, silence! I will give you one chance. The final question. What is the end? What is, like, the final boss in Minecraft? 
And bro, I'm not even gonna lie, this question isn't that bad. It's pretty clearly the Ender Dragon. Sure, like, okay, in all fairness, I have played a lot of Minecraft. I used to love it back in the day, and then I really got back into the game over 2020. And then I just, you know, started a YouTube channel, which was basically around Minecraft, and then it kind of turned into this. And I still use Minecraft for most of my background gameplay. So yeah, maybe I'm a little biased, but I even feel like back when I played it a little bit, back when I was only aware of it, I knew about Steve, I knew about Creepers, I knew about Herobrine, and I knew about the Ender Dragon. I feel like you don't need to know much about Minecraft to know about those four things, right? And I guess less so now, kids don't know about Herobrine, but bro, if you want a bit of a nostalgia trip and you're about my age, just look up the old, like, Herobrine sighting videos on YouTube. Those are crazy. But anyways, right, Nico really did not play a lot of Minecraft. I mean, I'm pretty impressed he's able to answer the first question as well as he did, but he was like, uh, I don't know, the Creeper? And when, bro, it, it, it's like Nico insulted the Minecraft kid's mother because the Minecraft kid's reaction to Nico saying that the final boss in Minecraft was the creeper was like, no, no. Like this kid was freaking out. Like this kid was having a full on breakdown. It's as if like you took his, his like computer and smashed it on the ground, bro. It's as if you took his PS4 and threw it out the window. It's as if, I don't know, you took your dog, his dog, shaved all the hair off, renamed it and said, this is my dog now. Like the kid was freaking out right now. And like, like, Nico's like, oh, like, I'm sorry. I thought the creepers were, like, the final boss or something. He's like, no, no, it's the Ender Dragon, you idiot. It is so clearly the Ender Dragon. I feel like you're just trying to make me mad at this point. And Nico's like, bro, I swear, it's just, it's, like, not that deep, bro. Like, you gotta trust me on this. It's simply not that deep. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, 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 no. You can't just be saying that. You don't understand what you just did. And the Minecraft kid kind of like goes into like all, goes back down on all fours because he was standing up for a second. And he like, you know, kind of like the position that frogs sit in. They're like, their hind legs are almost like cocked in front of them. Almost to like spring, be in a perfect position to like spring up. The Minecraft kid starts saying, charging spring attack. And Nico's like, uh, bro, like, what are you doing? Sorry, I just dropped my phone. That's why it sounds like the whole thing exploded for a second. Yeah. So he's like, uh, bro, like, what are you doing over here? And, this, and the Minecraft kid's like, charging my spring attack. And he's like, uh, spring attack? What do you mean in, like, the middle of saying, like, what do you mean by that? He sees the Minecraft kid jump at him with his, like, mouth open. And it looked like he was, like, going for the face, bro. Like, Minecraft Kid was going for it. So, like, Nico obviously kind of, like, has a reflex to, like, cover. Like, he's like, whoa. He, he like, extends his forearm a little bit or whatever to kind of, like, block the, like, the attack or whatever. And sure enough, you know, the Minecraft Kid latches on with his teeth, sinks into his forearm. And Nico's like, gah! And the Minecraft Kid's like, ah! Just chomps in, right? He just chomps in, and he's just like, you know, and Nico's like, what are you doing? And the Minecraft kid's like mumbling. He's like, he's like, he's like, what are you saying? He's like, he's like, because remember, this kid's teeth are like fully like sunk into his like arm at this point. So yeah, you're not understanding anything. That's just not going to happen, right? And so Nico's just like, what's, like, why are you biting me? Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Minecraft down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. And also, I'll try and heart a bunch of those comments. So if you want to farm some hearts on the channel, not a bad place to start. Also, if you want to support the channel, one of the best things you can do is watch old videos. Just binge watch the old stories. And a super easy way to do that is through my playlist, of the Storytime playlist, which has all the stories. I will be linking it in the pinned comment down below. So if you want to help me out, just put on that playlist while you're doing something else. And let me know in the comment section what you're doing while watching the Storytime playlist. Like, are you, I, I, I don't know, man, are you like what, playing a video game? Are you... I don't know, it's trying to go to sleep. There's a lot of things you could be doing, and I'd love to hear what you're doing down below, so make sure to comment that. Anyways, let's get back into the story. So eventually, like, you know, Nico, basically what he does is he lifts his forearm up, like, high enough so that the Minecraft kid lifts off the ground for a second, and the Minecraft kid's jaw, he doesn't have, like, cobra-like jaw strength. So the Minecraft kid eventually falls off of him, and once he falls off of him, he asks him, why did you, 
like, why did you bite me? And he's like, because you disrespected Minecraft. And, you know, Nico's like, what? Like, how did I disrespect Minecraft? He's like, well, you pretended to be a super fan, and then I asked you questions, and you failed the questions, so you deserve the bite. <laughs> and Nico's like, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. I never said that I was a super fan. You're making that up right there. All I ever said was that, like, you know, I used to play it back with my friends. And then, you know, you said, is that true? And I said, yes, because it was true. And then you asked, like, oh, well, are you, like, the, a huge fan? And I said, no, but then you said that I was lying, and I already said that I was a huge fan. I tried to answer those questions, and look, like, I obviously don't know, but that even if I was pretending to be a Minecraft super fan and it turns out I was lying, that is no excuse for you to go out and bite me. Like, that's absolutely ridiculous. Like, are you serious right now? And, uh, yeah, so, you know, Nikos or the Minecraft kid's like, well, I did what I thought was right. And that is respectable. And Nico's like, no, that was not respectable. Like, you can't just, like, do something stupid and crazy and say, I did what I thought was right and be like, oh, well, applause, right? It's like, oh, I cheated on my final exams. And he's like, and the teacher's like, bro, what? And you're like, no, 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 I thought it was the right thing to do. So you must be nice to me and give me a pass and, a, I don't know, a sticker. It's like, it doesn't work that way, bro. Life just doesn't work that way. But yeah. So the Minecraft kid is like, you know, it, remember, Nico still has like two to three hours left with the Minecraft kid. Supposedly in an hour from now, the Minecraft kid is supposed to go to bed. So Nico's like, okay, I just have to survive another hour with this kid. And while the Minecraft kid for the next hour didn't bite him or anything, he was still being super annoying. He was walking around like a zombie. And when, you know, Nico's like, hey, like, what do you want to eat? Like, all, all we got here is like, I don't know. Like, we got some like pizza in the fridge. He's like, Oh, Minecraft, so, like, as a zombie, I can only eat flesh, a.k.a. chicken, a.k.a. Chick-fil-A, get me Chick-fil-A. And Nico's like, bro, I don't have a car, and also, I'm not trying to door dash some Chick-fil-A, that's mad expensive. He's like, but the zombie won't eat pizza as it's not flesh. And, you know, then Nico goes on to say, well, actually, if you're a zombie, you'd only be eating rotten flesh. Or, or, like, rotting human flesh, and I, I, I don't really think that's the same thing as chicken. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, like, I'm a very special zombie that also eats chicken. And he's like, okay, bro, you're eating this pizza or you're not eating anything. Your mom says that you like this and that you'd eat it. So, uh, yeah, you should start eating this or else, like, you're just not going to eat anything. So the kid was being pretty annoying, but eventually it was 8 at night, which was his bedtime. So, you know, he's like, okay, like, zombie, mi or like, Minecraft kid, it's time for your bedtime, like... You can go upstairs. You can do whatever you want in your room. I don't really care as long as you're in there. And he's like, zombies are nocturnal. In Minecraft, they come out at night only. And, you know, Nico's like, okay, well, you're a very special zombie that goes to bed right now, bro. He's like, no, that part of me is normal. He's like, okay, well, then how are you up earlier today? Like, how were you walking around today if you only come out at night? Like, aren't you supposed to explode or something? He's like, I'm supposed to burn up, not explode. You're a fake Minecraft fan. And once again, he's like, bro. So Nico's like, dude, I explained to you, I'm not a Minecraft fan. I already said that. And he's like, oh, well, I have special armor on that allows me to be up at night and day. And he's like, okay, well, uh, can you at least do that in your room? He says, no, as a zombie, I'm going to walk around and figure it out. Like, I'm going to walk around and try and find some villagers to munch on. And Nico's like, okay, can you do that in your room? Can you walk around in your room to find villagers? And, you know, Minecraft kid's like, well, <laughs> what? Like, how do you expect me to find villagers in my room? As if he was going to find villagers walking around his house. And Nico's like, okay, look, your mom wants you to go to bed at 8. All you have to do is be in your room. It's not up to me if you fall asleep or not, but it is kind of up to me if you actually go to bed in your bed. Like, if, if you at least go into your bedroom. At least sit in your bed. And he's like... No, that will not happen. <sighs> There's like zombie noises again. He's like, okay, you know what? I'm done. Whatever. I'm going to the, I'm like, look, I can't deal with this anymore. So Nico sits down and just goes on his phone. And the Minecraft kid starts running around the house, like literally just sprinting around the house in circles. And Nico's head just like collapses on the ground. He's like, oh my God, just his hand, his like his head is in his forearms. It's like, bro, what's going on? Two hours later, the Minecraft kid is just like running around the house and the mom gets back. The mom gets back and she's like, oh, is, is he still up? 
And Nico's like, I've been trying to put him to bed for the last two hours. He just refuses. She says, oh my God, like, did anything else bad happen? And that's when the Minecraft kid kind of walks into the room. And Nico's like, well, yeah, I mean, your son did jump and bite me for a little bit and then refused to do anything I said. And then also refused to eat the food in the fridge. And she's like, he bit you? And Nico's like, well, yeah. And then the Minecraft kid's like, no, mom, he's lying. I didn't bite him. And Nico's like, all right, well, bro, try and explain this. Nico, like, reveal, like, pulls down his sweater or shirt or whatever, or just somehow shows his forearm that still has the tooth marks. Thankfully, the skin wasn't broken because this kid's mouth was... I mean, any mouth is, like, full of gross bacteria, right? And if it breaks the skin, you might have to actually go to the hospital, get that checked up, make sure you're all right, maybe get some antibiotics or something. Thankfully, he didn't break the skin, but the impression was literally still there. Normally, like, a bite mark would go away after, like, 30 minutes, but the thing was still there. It was definitely a bit fainter than it was before, but you could still see it pretty clearly. And the mom turns to the Minecraft kid, and it's like... I can't believe that you would bite your babysitter. And the Minecraft kid frantically trying to figure out a way out of it is like, uh, no, he, he just bit himself. It was crazy. He like, uh, I was standing there being like, what's up, bro? And he's like, look at this. And he takes his forearm and he just takes a big chop out of it. He has, <laughs> bites it. And then he's all like, I'm going to blame it on you. Ha ha ha. I'm so evil. And, you know, Nico's like, oh, that's what I said. I'm going to bite my own arm and blame it on you. Ha, ha, ha. I'm so evil. Is that really what I said, bro? And the Minecraft kid's like, yeah, it's like totally what happened. And like, look, at this point, obviously the Minecraft kid's mom really doesn't like she has two sides to the story. But come on now. Are you really going to believe that the babysitter decided to frame your son by chomping into his own arm and being like, ha, ha, ha. I'm going to pretend this was you. Or do you believe that your son, who thinks he's a literal zombie in Minecraft, who bite other people, right? That's what zombies do. May or may not have bit the babysitter because the babysitter said so, and also has a big bite mark about the size of his little jaw because he was like, I don't know, 10 or whatever. And yeah, so obviously Minecraft kid's mom's like, oh, like, I obviously don't believe you. You definitely bit him. He's like, no, mom, he bit himself. She's like, just go to your room right now. So the Minecraft kid does, in fact, listen to his mom, which smart move, bro. Like, that's a good call. Always listen to your mom. Like, it's just better. You're better off that way, man. But anyways, Minecraft kid goes up to his room. And his mom, the Minecraft kid's mom's like, I'm so sorry about this. Like, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I should be all right. Like, I'm okay. Like, I'll, I'll get, like, it's, it's not that bad. It didn't hurt or anything. And she's like, I'm so sorry. Like, I, like, here's another $10. And, you know, as much as Nico would have taken the $10 since, you know, this was his mom's friend. He's like, no, it's okay. Like, you know, I, I did the time and we can set to the, you know, the rate that we're supposed to be doing it. So Nico gets back home where his mom picks him up as 10. And on the car ride back, she's like, oh, Nico, how did it go? Did anything happen? And Nico's like, you know what? I'll tell you all about it. And obviously Nico tells, you, tells her the story that I just told you Click guys. on the video on screen Peace. right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Leave a like on this video right now and I will give you nothing. What's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. And just imagine for a second. Imagine you're enjoying your day, life's pretty good, and you're just chilling in class like a good boy. And then all of a sudden, right, you know, this Minecraft kid comes up to you, picks his nose, and then wipes it all over you, and then simultaneously breaks into a love song while doing the gritty across the, <laughs> across the room, dude. And you simply sit there and question your life. And all the choices you've made. So yeah, that's the story for today. I'm not even kidding. So sit back, relax. This is a bit of a longer one, so get yourself comfortable. Maybe get something nice to eat. Get all cozy, dude. And let's just jump right into it. So anyways, we're going to call the subscriber who submitted the story Charlie. So anyways, in Charlie's class, there was this Minecraft kid. Or there was a, a kid that we're just going to call the Minecraft kid. And the Minecraft kid had started something that he called the Enderman Cult. It was the most exclusive club in the grade. I'm just kidding. It was literally a club of one, or a cult of one, uh, in that one individual 
happened to be the Minecraft kid. However, the Minecraft kid had a very unique way of getting new members. Like, maybe you're thinking that, you know, he'll slip a letter under someone's, like, room or something or into their backpack or into their clo uh, closet, into their locker, right, that says you have an invitation to join the most exclusive club in all of Riverdale High or wherever you go to school, I don't, I don't really know, you may join the Enderman Club. Or maybe, you know, they have a little fair, right? When the school has a club fair, he sets up a little makeshift tent that says you may join the Enderman Club. No, no, no. The Minecraft kid had a very unique way of adding people to the Enderman Club. He would pick his nose, wipe it on someone, and be like, do you want to join the Enderman Club? Yeah, so uh, believe it or not, this has not had the highest success rate. I mean, by not the highest success rate, I mean a 0% success rate. So not, not that good. Anyways, this all this story all started one day when Charlie was in his math class. Charlie was sitting in the front of the room because while well, normally Charlie enjoyed kind of spacing out and not paying attention, he was not doing so well in this math class, right? So he kind of told himself, all right, Charlie, man, like we just gotta, we just gotta, we just gotta grind through this. So sit in the front of the class, pay attention, do your best, like whatever, right? And, uh, you know, normally the Minecraft kid never sat next to him because actually Charlie was usually one of like two kids to sit in the front row. But one day, right, when Charlie sits down, the Minecraft kid sits down right next to him, which was a little weird because like Charlie and the Minecraft kid, they weren't friends. Uh, I mean, they weren't like mortal enemies yet, but uh, like, I don't know, Charlie just didn't know the kid. And, you know, Charlie for a second was like, oh, well, maybe this kid wants to pay attention too, or he's just sitting in a new spot. Charlie didn't think anything of it. So the teacher starts teaching the class, right? And in the corner of Charlie's eye, he sees the Minecraft <laughs> sees the Minecraft kid take out his finger and just shove it straight up his nose. And Charlie is like, "Dude, what the? F oh my god, bro!" And the Minecraft kid, he's just digging around in there. It's pretty disgusting. And Charlie's like, "Dude, please, just like, just get a tissue or just go to the bathroom, like, here, dude, like, really." In front of everyone, in front of me, really, that's my that's my main concern, if I'm being honest, like, in front of me, dude. And, uh, yeah, the Minecraft kid eventually is done, and he rips out, like, a pretty decent... <laughs> dude, I can't believe I'm, I'm even just, like, entertaining this story. But anyways, he, he, he whips out a pretty big, uh, you know, uh, booger, right? And, uh, he looks over, and he makes direct eye contact with Charlie, because Charlie was, like... I, it, look, it was looking at him in the corner of his eye like, what is this kid doing, right? And the Minecraft kid gives Charlie this, like, this devious smile, bro. And he takes his finger and he, like, lunges over and reaches over the desk and smears it all, <laughs> smears it all over Charlie's, like, shirt, like, on the side of his sleeve. And the thing is, like, Charlie, wa Charlie was wearing, like, a, a, a purple shirt so there or no, no, it was like either purple or black. I just remember like that Charlie told me that it was like a very deep colored shirt. So the contrast, it was so obvious something got smeared and it was pretty clear as like from some kid's nose. And Charlie's like, dude, what? And the Minecraft kid's like, so you have just been tagged by the Enderman cult. Would you like to join the Enderman cult? And at this point, Charlie's like, what the f bro? Like, why did you just do that? And Charlie's like, Loki has no chill. And, like, because he's, like, yelling in the middle of class. And the teacher's like, what's going on over here? And Charlie's like, this kid just, like, wiped his, like, picked his nose and wiped it all over me. And the, you know, the teacher's, like, turns to the Minecraft kid. He's like, Minecraft kid, I'm going to ask you to step outside for five minutes and think about what you did. Like, it's not good to be a distraction in class. And while the Minecraft kid got up, he walked by Charlie and says, like, kind of whispers, like, dude, you just meshed with the Enderman cult? And you're going to show regret meshing with the Enderman cult, bro. And Charlie's like, all right, dude, like, sure, whatever, bro. And so he moves on and he walks by. And Charlie honestly thinks nothing of it because he's like, oh, no, man, the Enderman cult doesn't like me right now. No, man, not the Enderman cult. No. Yeah, but he didn't really care, TLDR. Uh, but yeah, that was actually not the end of the Minecraft kid. Believe it or not, the story does not end like 10% into the video. But yeah, anyways, so Charlie doesn't really think much of it after that, except uh, when he goes back to his locker, in, like, crayon is, like, scribbled on his locker. It's, like, scribbled in black crayon because they're, like, white, walker, white lockers. So you can, like, see it pretty clearly. It says, like, it's like a, it's like a terrible drawing of an Enderman. 
and it says under it, hashtag Enderman Cult. Bro used a hashtag like he was on Twitter in 2013. Like, what is he doing this on, like, a hashtag Enderman cult on someone's locker, bro? Like, what are you doing out here? Like, uh, bro, I mean, uh, kid's in a time capsule right now and thinks Twitter's real life. Anyways, though, he should have also, like, captioned a hashtag Enderman cult, hashtag like for like, hashtag thank God it's Friday. Like, bro is, re- I-, I-, I don't know, man. And Charlie looks at this. And he takes a photo of it, and he's like, all right, do I report this? Like, do I just get this kid in more trouble? And he looks at his phone, and it's like a photo. It's like the goofiest thing ever. The Enderman cult is after him. He's like, nah. Nah, dude. Like, I'm not, you know what? This kid's annoying, and he did kind of ruin one of my shirts, but nah. I'm I'm not going to be that guy going out of my way to get this kid in trouble. And uh, maybe Charlie should have, because... The Enderman cult, a.k.a. the Minecraft kid, was not done with him yet. The Minecraft kid had a lot more before he was satisfied. Yeah, so anyway, skip ahead to that weekend. So that weekend, Charlie and his friends were, you know, they kind of got together on a Friday night, and they were going into the woods in their local neighborhood, right? So the in their neighborhood, there was kind of like a woods area that was pretty, was pretty like, it was a pretty big woods, right? And there was kind of like campfire pits in the middle of it. And as, like, Charlie and his friends were walking to, like, the woods, he saw the Minecraft kid walking on the other side of the street in, like, the same direction as him. And he was like, that's weird. Like, I thought I would have noticed him earlier, right? And he's in his creeper hoodie, and he's looking straight down. But Charlie notices the Minecraft kid is, every once in a while, glancing over at Charlie and giving him, like, a look of, like, just, like, a little quick look. And Charlie kind of, like, whispers to the other kids, like, yo, dude. The other kids are like, dude, what? He's like... Like, quickly look over there. Don't all do it at once. Obviously, all of Charlie's friends immediately, all at once, look over. Charlie's like, you guys are seriously idiots. Like, when I say don't all look over at once, don't all look over at once. But anyways, see that kid over there? They're all like, yep. And and Charlie's like, of course you all see him because you all looked at once. But anyways, that kid over there, do you remember when I was telling you about how that kid, like, wiped his nose and then, like, or picked his nose and wiped it all over me? And they're like, dude, yeah, that was gross. And then he said, like, he wanted to, like, wanted me to join the Enderman cult, whatever the frick that was. And then he, like, got mad at me and drew that all over my locker. And all the other guys were like, yeah. He's like, that's that kid. And they're all like, bro, what? And, uh, yeah, so they eventually get to the entrance to the forest. And they watch as the Minecraft kid looks at them go into the forest, but then doesn't follow them in, but kind of waits. Like, literally stops walking and just stares as they walk in. One of the kids leans over to Charlie. He's like, dude. That Minecraft kid is seriously creepy, bro. Like, he's just watching us right now. And Charlie's like, yeah, man, I know it's kind of weird, but, like, what are we going to do about it, bro? So they get in, and they, you know, they start walking into the forest. And I'm not going to lie, or Charlie's not going to lie, it was a little creepy. It was a little scary. Like, uh, I mean, it was, like, the, the, I mean, it was a dark forest at night with a bunch of, like, animals and trees. I mean, it was scary, right? So they're walking in there. And, like, Charlie is sure that he hears rustling in the forest. However, here's the thing. Uh, Other animals live in the forest, like squirrels, bears, whatever. Um, So, I mean, that, that, that stuff, like, just happens. But Charlie, like, feels like he's like, no, no, no. He's like, you know what? It feels like there's just someone walking in the woods parallel to us. Like, he's, because, like, Charlie and his friends are walking on a trail, but it sounds like someone is walking deep in the woods, almost adjacent to them, which is kind of creepy. He's not going to lie. I said I'd do more scary stories. I guess this is the closest thing to a scary story I do during October. I think on Halloween itself, I'll do scarier stories, guys. Don't worry. However, right, um, Charlie's kind of just like, okay, well, it sounds like someone is like, he kind of mentions, he's like, do you guys hear like that, like those footsteps? All of a sudden they all stop. And then the footsteps obviously stop as well. The other kids are probably like, dude, it's probably like some squirrel or something. Like you're tripping out right now. And Charlie's like, bro, I don't know. It kind of sounds like someone's walking in the woods, like parallel to us walking, like, like listen in while we're walking. So anyways, they keep walking again. And the other kids, one other kid is like, dude, I don't hear anything. But another one of the kids in that group is like, Charlie, like, yeah, actually, I hear that too. I don't know, man. Look, it's like we're in the woods. We're obviously not alone. There are a ton of animals all around us. I kind of just think it's one of them. Like, I don't really think it's a person following us. Like, it's probably just some curious animal or I don't know, man. Like, I, 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 like, I wouldn't jump to the conclusion that someone's following us. So Charlie's like, hey, man, I guess that's fair enough. 
Like, I guess that's fine. Like, whatever. So they go, and they eventually make it to the campfire site. And they're all sitting around the campfire, and they're trying to get it lighted and started. They brought, like, a lighter, some, like, newspapers. They're finding, they're collecting sticks or whatever. And to collect sticks, they need to kind of, like, go away from the campfire site and into the woods a little bit. And they all kind of split up, like, in a classic horror movie, but they all kind of, like, split up to gather sticks. And so Charlie, like, walks in, is a little bit far away from the campfire. And he's, like... He hears like a like a twig crack, like almost like someone accidentally stepping on something. And he looks up, and it's too dark for him to see anything. And he's just like, like no, like ah, like that was definitely something. Like that was definitely someone. Charlie's definitely a little bit paranoid, a little bit tripped out right now. He's like, ah, I don't know, man. Like this is really weird. So he quickly grabs some sticks or whatever, and then is just kind of like you know goes back to the campfire site. He kind of chalked it up to him, like he kind of like just brushed it off as like ah. It's probably just some animal, right? Like, that's kind of like most of these sounds are going to be anyways. But, uh, yeah, a little spoiler, it has not been an animal the whole time. Well, I mean, it technically has been, but it's not a non-human animal the whole time, right? So anyways, uh, they're all kind of like around the campfire. They're starting to light it, and that's when they hear... Guys, if you've ever played Minecraft before, do you know the sound a Minecraft zombie makes? It's like kind of a moaning sound. A... Gr God, I'm, I'm so stupid. It's like a groaning... <laughs> it's a groaning sound. Even that isn't great. It's like a... Ooh, it's not a moaning sound. Also, I'm... God. You guys are gonna be weird. You weirdos. It's gonna be all strange in my comment section. Screw you guys. Anyways, it makes kind of like a... Ooh, kind of like zombie type sound. That was a terrible impression, but if you know what it is, you know what it is. And if not, look up zombie Minecraft sound or whatever, and you'll get a pretty good answer. So yeah, um, they're sitting around the campfire, and all of a sudden they hear a very loud Minecraft zombie sound. But when you're sitting in the woods, and you're kind of a little bit on edge anyways, and you're a little bit freaked out, and it's already kind of creepy, if you heard that zombie sound, and you didn't play Minecraft 24 hours a day, these kids played it once or twice, right? They wouldn't make the connection, and they all just, they're all sitting around the campfire, and they're all, they go dead quiet. They're like... And then, like, at this point, Charlie's like, dude, what was that? Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Minecraft down below. I'll try and hard as many comments as I can. And if you want to support the channel, the best thing you can do is to watch this video all the way through. And after that, if you could watch, like, literally watching my old videos supports the channel even more than you can ever imagine. So if you've been binge-watching my videos, let me know how many you've watched today or this week in the comments, and I will heart it and say thank you. Anyways, back to the story. So, uh, they're all sitting around the campfire, they hear a zombie gro moaning, uh, what the fuck? They, they hear a, a, a zombie sound, right? <laughs> a zombie Minecraft sound. And they all start to, like, freak out. And Charlie's like, nobody move. Like, where did that come from? And they all kind of, like, turn around. And they hear it again. And at this point, like, Charlie's like, wait a minute, like, and someone's like, or, well, cause one guy's like, dude, is that like a bear? Or something like that? And Charlie's like, no, that sounds... That sounds computerized. And they're all like, yeah, that sounded a little tinny. Like, that sounded a little weird. And uh, eventually, like, Charlie, like, his night vision was getting better. So he peers into the forest, and he sees, like, a shoe. He sees, like, a New Balance or, like, Skechers Hot Wheels shoes or whatever. Like, some, some like, kid shoes, right? And he's like, wait a minute. And he walks up to where the sound is. <laughs> and he, like, walks up, and he sees these, like, two feet sticking out behind a tree, and they're, like, little kid shoes, so it's not, like, some serial killer murderer type massive old man or something, and he looks around the tree, and he sees the Minecraft kid, the one who wiped a booger on him, aka the, the CEO of the Enderman cult, sitting there with a speaker and a phone, and the Minecraft kid jumps up, he's like, I got you guys, I got you this is why you don't mess with the Enderman cult. Oh! And uh, at this point, you know, Charlie's like, all right, man. Yeah, you got us, I guess. And the Minecraft kid's like, oh, I got you guys. So good. <laughs> and then one of the kids is like, oh, dude, are you the guy who wipe picks his nose and wipes it on people? Like, you're kind of freaking weird, bro. And they're all like, huh? And the Minecraft kid's like, huh? Well, uh, that's not weird. That's just how I initiate people into the Enderman cult. Like, you're weird, dude. 
And they're all like, no, bro, like, you really got to stop doing that. Like, obviously, there's a reason why no one's in the Enderman cult, because that's freaking weird. He's like, no, dude, you're the weird ones, and also, you just got owned by me. By me. I trolled you all so good, like, you just got pranked by the Enderman cult. Enderman cult one, stupid idiots zero. By the way, the stupid idiots are you. I know that you all wish you could have joined the Enderman cult, but tough, not happening, Oh, grabs his like speaker and just like le and like starts to walk out, and uh, yeah. So Charlie turns to his other friends. He's like, "Yeah, so yeah, that was the kid. That was the kid." And uh, skip forward to the next day, Monday. The the Minecraft kid. Okay, class is done. They walk out, and the Minecraft kid like drops a piece of paper by accident. Like a piece of paper falls out of his bag or whatever, and uh, Charlie sees it and he's like, "You know, this kid's a nerd or whatever," but I don't know. If it's important, I'll just give it to him. You know, maybe if we're on good terms... Okay, I did that transition kind of quickly. Um, after the Minecraft kid left the forest, they all kind of, like, stayed there for a little bit longer, but then they just felt kind of weird, so they went back home. So the Minecraft kid low-key did get them. But anyways, in uh, the couple days later, Monday, they're in class, and the teacher dismisses class, and this is a class where Charlie and the Minecraft kid have it together. The Minecraft kid walks out the front door... And, uh, you know, he drops something. So Charlie looks at it, and he's like, picks it up. He's like, you know what? I'll just give this to the Minecraft kid. Well, that was his own original intention until Charlie looked at the piece of paper. He looks at the piece of paper. He picks it up, and it says on it, Enderman Club Classified Document Top Secret. And at this point, he's like, okay, man. I hate to be that guy. I hate to be that guy, right? but I'm gonna read it. So even though it says Enderman Cult, top secret, oh my God, don't talk, like, don't read this man, it's secret. He, uh, he kind of opens up. If anything, like, if nothing was written on the front of the piece of paper, like, if it just says, like, math notes, you know, Charlie would have not even touched it. But just because it says Enderman Club, top secret, do not read under any circumstances, then, you know, bro, Charlie's gonna read it. So Charlie opens it up, and he starts to read it, and he realizes that it is plans. It is like a mission. It is an Enderman Club secret operation. And it is Operation Ask Out Ava. So there's a girl in uh, Charlie's class who we're just going to call Ava. And she was kind of she was kind of like the prettiest girl in the class. And because of that, because they were in like eighth grade or whatever, she kind of developed a god complex. She kind of became like that the all the characters from Mean Girls like into one. And, you know, she was, like, the prettiest, and she became, like, the most popular. But because of that, she was low-key a jerk, right? So Charlie already knew that this was not going to end well. However, Charlie then read what the actual plan was. And Charlie almost couldn't believe it. Like, it was so bad. Let me just tell you, I don't want to spoil it yet, because I'm going to tell you exactly what the Minecraft kid did the Minecraft kid did to ask Ava out in a second, but I'm going to give you a little hint. It involved him singing his own cover of My Heart is a Stereo, Beats for You, you know that song by Maroon 5, and also involved the, the popular viral dance move, The Gritty, and also involved asking out and trying to kiss Ava in front of everyone. Yeah, it's going to be really bad. And here's the thing, guys. I don't know if I can handle this much cringe in such a short amount of time. So I want to call up one of my friends to tell a less cringe but still incredibly cringe story just to give myself a little bit of a break. Let me call him up. All right, let me call up and Queen. Let's see what he has to say. You got a story for me? Yes, I got a story for you. Alright, let's hear it. Okay, so this story's about like some creepy dude that would always pull up to our grocery store. Damn. And, you know, of course I worked as a cashier for some time. And, you know, this this dude, he was a regular at the store. That would like see him there on the daily. I'd just be ringing out groceries and boom, there he is. He would walk in. And we call this dude crate guy that's because he had like a milk crate when like he walked into the store and he would just put his groceries in there and he would also bring in a laptop 
which will be important for later. Bro, what is doing? Who? What is he? What is he doing with the laptop? That's a little, that's a little suspect. I but. don't know. Anyways, don't anyways, know. let's let's go on. Let's go on. I'm not gonna spoil it though. All right. So he stays in there past closing all the time, or well, he often would. I'm not gonna say he was in there all the time past closing, but he often would stay in there past closing. And one day, it got so bad where the customer service manager had to kick him out. They had to tell him like, "Bro, you gotta leave. We're about to close." And I was there that day, and it was, it was rough because like we had to stay longer because of him. Hate to see it. And then, yeah, he it was like, he was there. He was just typing away on this laptop, and I'm like, what the fuck is he even typing? What is he even making on this laptop? I don't know. Wattpad fan writing, fictions. Like, that's my guess. Essay? Twenty twenty oh, bucks essay. on Wattpad. Uh, Wattpad Inguine X Tag Swag fan fictions. That's my bet. Yeah. One hundred dollars. Yeah. Anyways. Alright, so I didn't really know at this point. I didn't really know him that well at this point in the story. But um, unfortunately, one of my friends did. And we'll call him Kyle. Fuck so you, now, Kyle. Great Guy. <coughs> so, Great Guy went through Kyle's line and, you know, he had prepared food or whatever. And then, you know, this dude just started small talking with them. And, you know, it was pretty adultish. It's pretty uncle-ish small talk. It's like, oh, where do you go to school? Blah, blah, blah. Mm. And all that type shit. And then he asked Kyle if he played any sports, like, for his school. Did he say, and oh, Kyle, you're looking you're looking nice and beefy and juicy. You must be a big <laughs> football player, man. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> and said, but he said no. And But he did tell him that he was on the debate team. And he was a part of that for some time, and he was a captain of the team, too. And then this dude, crate guy, just said this completely out-of-pocket joke. Nice cock? Oh, no, no, never mind, never mind. Completely. And that shit did not land at all. And, Been and there? maybe even Been worse there? that we were, like, 17 at the time. Mm-hmm. And so this dude says, and I quote, Are you a mess debater? Mass debater, mass debater. Uh, mass debater. I yeah, see, because touching the pain no. is a little funny. That show was straight, yeah, that was straight no. well, he, I guarantee you he was straight face. Dude, he, just did, he just did the LOL funny. Oh my god. Uh, yep, um, haha, that was uh, very no. funny. But, um, and keep in mind, this dude was old. This man was old as hell. He looked like, I don't know, a dude Carl from Up. That's what my brother told me. Mm. That's, that's his comparison. So, and that day forward, we just all thought he was a creep. We're like, wow, this dude's a fucking creep. Why would you think that? Yeah. I mean, isn't it normal for old men to come in and ask if you beat your yeah, dick every that's day? Yeah, very normal. Damn, I thought it was normal, bro. Okay. Oh I guess I can't be doing that in grocery stores. And I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. Okay, and then, what else happened? Oh, yeah, I, I met the dude. On this day, it was, when was this, 2021. I finally met the guy. And he was sitting at one of the tables in the store, and I had to wash my hands because, you know, my finger was bleeding, and, you know, my hands looked like a murder scene, so I had to go wash my hands. I don't remember why my my hands were bleeding, or my finger was bleeding. And then, you know, he was like, oh, uh, he was doing all this small talk shit with me. Mm, uh-oh. Yep. Uh-oh. And... What's happened? Did he also uh, ask if you're a you know, masturbator? I just tried to dip out that conversation fast as I could after you know what I heard about him and the whole masturbator thing. So mm. you know, I just got pretty uncomfortable when I was around him all the time. And of course, he would go through my line too. And yeah, when he did, he was like interrogating me. It was crazy. He was like asking. He was doing a whole fucking background check on me, like, "Oh, what's your ethnicity, religion? Oh, what Bro. country are you from?" Like a bunch of weird ass questions. Damn. Yeah, but th- it, this isn't even like the climax of the story yet. Like he, he did something much worse. I even got him like banned from the store. Damn. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Okay. So. All right. So some time passes, and okay, we all find out that this dude started up a GoFundMe. That's what he was typing up on this laptop. Mm. And remember when I said, like, I saw him typing up on the laptop? Mm-hmm. That's, that's what he was typing up. This 
long ass GoFundMe. Like there was so much lore on here, it was insane. Like about times this dude, I don't know, he got like arrested or something. I don't know, it was crazy. Yo, tax word. Yo, what's good? I'm talking about crate guy. Crate guy? Oh my god, now this dude was a fucking menace. All right, we're at the climax. We're at the climax. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. What's the GoFundMe? All right. So the GoFundMe, bro, it had so much. I don't even remember any of the lore on there. There was just so much to take in. It was like, yeah, you got arrested for tax fraud. What do you get arrested for? Do you remember? I don't even remember, honestly. Um, it was I... like mooching off. It was mooching off some like hotels Wi-Fi. He got like yeah, out of there. Yeah. He got, did he get arrested? No, he didn't get arrested. I think he got kicked out of like some hotel for like mooching off their Wi-Fi. Damn. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, it was a lot of lore. So you know, we were reading up on the lore. So like, we were, we just thought it was just fucking hilarious. Do you have like a Wikipedia page? Just entertaining ourselves. Like, wow, what the fuck? Damn. Damn. And Wait, then yeah, why did he get kicked out? Oh, the why do you get kicked out from our store? Well, mm -hmm. um, so the guy that gets the carriages, he was just doing his thing, getting his car getting the carriages, and he sees this dude by the woods. Or mm -hmm. I don't know if he was by the woods. I have no idea. I wasn't there that day. Mm -hmm. But I would assume what he was doing, he would be by the woods because this dude was just pissing in the middle of the fucking parking lot. Damn. Damn. You were pissing in the parking lot. I still can't fucking believe it. I mean, I guess bro had to go. I mean, I guess bro had to go. I mean... Go. Bro, there was a bathroom in the store, bro. Yeah, like, but maybe it was kind of stinky in there, dude. I don't know. I, uh, there's a lot of good reasons to pee in the parking lot. <laughs> I can name at least 100, but I won't get into it. Anyways, damn. And, yeah, long story short, manager's like, bro, never come back here again. You gotta go. And that was the end of Crate Guy. Anyways, thanks Nguyen for coming on. His link will be down below. He makes some other very entertaining content. I think you guys will like it as well. And all right, after that about eight minute break, I feel like I am, I think I'm physically able to proceed with the cringe that is about to happen with the Minecraft kid. If I didn't take that little story break and let a friend come in, I guarantee you guys, I would have passed away from the cringe. It would have just been so much that I would have just fallen apart and this YouTube video would have never uploaded. Like, my limbs would have literally, literally detached from my body and my brain would have just exploded. So anyways, at this point, just a little recap. Charlie found a note from Minecraft Kid saying that he was going to ask out La Ava, this girl that was pretty notorious for not being that nice, in front of everyone in the lunchroom and not ask her out normally. Ask her out by taking a karaoke set, singing My Heart's a Stereo, and then try and like kiss her while doing the gritty. It was like the most insane thing he's ever heard. And he looks at, okay, so he's looking at it and he looks at when and where, and it says when, lunchtime the date, and it was today's date. And you know what time it was? It was lunchtime, baby. So at that point, you know, at this point, like, Charlie's like, oh my god, he rushes into the lunchroom. Like, Charlie has never sprinted this fast. Low-key, Charlie could be like, you know, he could play track after the way he sprinted for this, right? So he, he sprints in, bursts into the lunchroom, and that's when he sees the Minecraft kid walking up to Ava's table. And Ava, low-key the mean girl, likes, is sitting there with all of her little minions around her. And, uh, you know, he walks up to her, and he has a backpack on, right? And he goes, ahem. And, like, Ava looks up, and all the other mean girls look up. And they're all giving the Minecraft kid, like, the most, like, like the, the biggest, like, what are you doing here, bro, look I've ever seen out of anyone, dude. Like, it is a crazy look they're giving him. So, yeah, anyways, um, they're all just looking at him. And, you know, he's like, ah, ha, ha. And he, like, goes over, he grabs a chair, and, like, he uses the chair to step on another table, and he's standing on the table right next to Ava's table, which happened to be, like, empty or only have, like, one kid at or two kids or something. And he reaches into his backpack, and he pulls out a karaoke set. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Like, this is literally the craziest story I've ever heard. He pulls out a karaoke set, man. He's, he whips that thing out, 
and he puts it down, and apparently it already has batteries or whatever, whatever so it doesn't need to be plugged in. And he speaks into the microphone. He's like, hey, Ava, can you hear me? And it's like the most loudest thing you've ever heard in the entire lunchroom. Turns around, because it's basically like this kid's on the sound speaker at how loud this is, right? <laughs> so Ava's just looking at him with a look of, like, super embarrassment and also anger. Just pure anger. Because she has no idea what's going on, but she already knows that this is going to be bad. So Charlie is like, yes, yes, I made it in time. Let's go. So the Minecraft kid takes out his, like, phone and starts playing, like, Stereo Hearts by Maroon 5. So he's like, my hearts are stereo. I'm not actually going to sing it or in do it well because, like, you two, like, literally they'll try and copyright you if you even sing the words, like, too much. So just imagine that song is playing and is playing through the microphone, right? So it's like the worst audio ever. It's like it nails on a chalkboard type audio. And that's when the Minecraft kid starts singing his own, like his own rendition of the song, bro. Like I got, <laughs> so imagine stereo hearts and imagine the lyrics to it. The Minecraft kid decides to make up his own lyrics. So he says like, my heart's a Minecraft stereo. It beat beats for you like a, music disc like minecraft so listen to it close hear my minecraft thoughts and every beat from the music it is like the crappiest thing ever he's like make me your ender man and turn and ender pearl away when you feel low this minecraft song was meant for you so uh chill with me because i'm an ender okay that <laughs> okay maybe it wasn't that ass but it was like, it was that ass, bro. I'm trying to say it was, it was bad. It was bad, bro. Yeah, so if you can only imagine, Ava is not really having the greatest, like her face is just a look of terror. Because a Minecraft kid is singing like a terrible remix that he made of Stereo Hearts saying, <laughs> I mean, you heard part of it, like it was bad, right? At this point, Charlie's just like, there is no way. There is literally no way that this is happening right now. Like, this is the most insane thing. So eventually, the song ends, and he was like, Everyone, that was written by the Enderman cult, a.k.a. me and all the other members. He kind of did leave in the fact that the other members of the Enderman cult were literally just him. And he's like, Ava, I must ask you, do you want to date me? And she just is looking at him. She doesn't say anything, bro. She looks at him. And this is, like, where the worst thing ever, it is the worst miscommunication I've ever seen. Because, like, at this point, the Minecraft kid asks her out on a date, right? To, like, start dating him, which they've never spoken before. So, yeah, that's gonna work. And instead of saying no, she doesn't say anything. But she gives a look of, like, what is going on right now. Which the Minecraft kid interpreted... Anything that's not a no is a yes, which is a terrible thing to live by. Please, if you take away one thing from this video, someone not explicitly saying no does not mean that they say yes, okay? Uh, just please take that away from this video. If you have to learn one thing from the Connor Pugs channel, please learn that at least. So the Minecraft kid is like, I'm gonna take that as a yes, and then starts doing like the gritty dance. <laughs> what the... What is my life, bro? And he starts doing the gritty dance around the cafeteria. And everyone is just, like, talking to each other, Look, Some people just had their mouths are gasping open. And he's just, like, grittying around the cafeteria. <laughs> and eventually, like, Ava's just, like, a loss for words at this point. And the Minecraft kid goes up to Ava, gritties up to her, and reaches out to, like try and like kiss her or something like he's like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he like puffers out his che his like lips and starts leaning in very slowly after gritting to her and she's just like oh get away from me dude okay i don't think she says dude but she's like ew like you got cuties and you're gross like what are you doing around here and then everyone starts laughing and the minecraft kid's like but you said you wanted to go on a date with me and ava's like i didn't say anything like that he's like but you didn't say no she's like but i didn't say yes i was at a loss for words and the minecraft kid is like ah another loss for the enderman club one day we shall win again and he's like <laughs> He, like, gets his backpack, packs up his karaoke, 
and sadly walks out of the cafeteria. And that's when he sees Charlie. And he's like, you! And he literally takes out his, uh, he takes out his... (laughs) Oh my god, dude, this story's ridiculous. He takes out, he ta- this kid, bro, he takes out his karaoke set, turns it back on, is like, you, and he says it again, but this time it's super loud, so everyone in the cafeteria's heads turn and look at the Minecraft kid. And the Minecraft kid is like, you, and he points to Charlie. You told, you told Ava to say no to me. She would have clearly said yes to me if you didn't interfere. And Charlie's just looking at him like, dude, what? what like what what do you what and he's like i knew it i knew it from the start you have been plotting against the enderman club since the day we existed since the day we started and to think that i thought you would have been a great member how wrong i was i challenge you to a rap battle charlie's just like dude what he's like one two three charlie you look so stupid. Uh, guys, what rhymes with stupid? Charlie, you look so dumb. Makes me want to stick my finger in my ass. No, I mean, in my bum. <laughs> Charlie's like, dude, I'm not, I'm not going to do a rap battle with you. He's like, oh, you can't cape the heat? You can't take the heat right now? And everyone, everyone's just staring at him. Eventually, the Minecraft kid starts to get pretty self-conscious. He's like, guys... I just won that rap battle fair and square. Whether you want to deal with it or not, it's not my concern. Puts his, like, he puts the uh, karaoke set back into his backpack, puts it on, is like, good day. Walks out of the cafeteria. And, uh, yeah, uh, Charlie uh, sits down, eats lunch, and the entire cafeteria is abuzz with, like, people talking. Because how do you not talk after something as ridiculous and crazy and insane as that happens? Like, I, I do not blame them for talking, right, dude? And, um, yeah, let's just say that the, uh, that the, the Enderman Club did not, did not, or the Enderman Cult did not do much after that point. Okay, guys, if you made it this, I know I already had a secret word of the day, which was, did I even have a secret word of the day? I forgot what it was. But, look, if you made it this far into the video, then you made it, like, 40 minutes into a video, and that helps me out so much. And I really want to say thank you to the people who made it this far, so I want you to comment... Uh, I want you to comment. <laughs> I, what, what do I want you to comment? I want you to comment door if you made it this far. It's the old word I used to use like two years ago. And uh, yeah, uh, if I see doors, like I will probably try and reply to every comment I can saying thank you so much because making it this far into the video is crazy. And if you want to keep helping me out, watch another video. But yeah, thank click you on the guys video so on much. screen right now. Time. I know Peace. you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. Today we got a pretty crazy story of a Minecraft kid who ruins the school play. I know you'll enjoy this, so let's get into it. We're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Robert. So anyways, Robert was in the fifth grade, and the fifth grade play was, a, was like the big thing at his school. Everyone was, that was like the big deal that everyone would talk about, everyone would, everyone would be excited for. And it was like, uh, it was almost like a coming of age celebration. It was almost like you are now, and you are now really a true middle schooler once you've completed the fifth grade play. And all the fourth, third, second, first, whatever graders really enjoyed watching it as it was always kind of a fun, it was a fun event. Basically the whole lower school time Type thing had the entire day off when the fifth grade play was they were able to watch it uh, in the afternoon and they basically got a half day on that day so it was also really fun because they were able to go home early and it was like no classes or whatever so it was a really fun celebration it was just a really great time how it, anyways so the auditions for the fifth grade play happened about one to two months before the play actually happened and robert was pretty excited robert had no intentions of having I don't know, like a main role or anything, but he was just excited to be part of the fifth grade play as that was a pretty big deal. So anyways, you know, it's the day of the auditions and there's only, you know, the the play has already been written and it's been chosen and it's like, I don't know, it's always like one of these classic fairy tales or whatever. So they're maybe doing, or like a classic story. So for this year, they're doing James and the Giant Peach. I remember when I was actually, I think in second or third grade, my third grade play or second grade play was also James and the Giant Peach. And I had a great time doing that. And apparently it was a good play, according to my mom. She wouldn't be biased, right? She, <laughs> she wouldn't tell me it was a great play, even though it wasn't, right? 
Anyways, though, so it was James and the Giant Peach, so you got, like, all the... I, I kind of forgot the story, but uh, anyways, I, th I think I was a grasshopper or something, so you got, like, a grasshopper as a kid. I don't know, man. But anyways, the important thing to know is that there was no creeper from Minecraft in James and the Giant Peach. That might sound like a really, really weird fact, like, okay, Connor, yeah, and there also was no Darth Vader in James and the Giant Peach. I can list weird, un unimportant facts as well. However, this is correctly a weird fact. However, it's not unimportant, as you will soon see. Because there's another character that is time for me to introduce, and he will be known as the Minecraft Kid. So anyways, right, the Minecraft Kid is obsessed with Minecraft. It's a great game. It's the background gameplay for a lot of my games. I actually got a lot of my videos. I just got it for my friends a couple nights ago too, so we can casually like flip it on if we got nothing better to do. It's a great game. I do enjoy it a lot. However, this kid's entire life was Minecraft, and when I was in fifth grade, I was kind of similar. I've really enjoyed the game as well, and it was a big part of my childhood, so I don't blame him. However, he went a little bit far. So anyways, let's skip to the day of the auditions. So James was there, uh, Robert, sorry. I'm thinking of like James and the Giant Peach. So if I call Robert James, I'm sorry, you know what I mean. Anyway, so Robert and everyone in the fifth grade was there. There was a lot of buzz, a lot of excitement. There were definitely some kids who were like really ready and really wanted specific parts. So they were a little bit stressed out. Robert was just here to have a good time and was excited to be part of something bigger that he remembered always enjoying when he was a little kid. And now he was on the stage instead of him being in the audience watching. So anyways, Robert is just there and it's very chill. How However, Robert also witnesses the Minecraft kid. And the Minecraft kid goes up to the director and is basically asking, like, hey, director, I want the role of the creeper. Like, I want to be the creeper that comes in and explodes. And the, dir <laughs> the director looks at him and kind of goes, eh, what? Uh, like, bro, what? And he's like, ah, uh, I'm sorry, Minecraft kid. Um, there is no creeper. I'm not sure if that is. But that, that's very much not a thing in this play. Like, here are the roles, like, uh, just so it's clear, just so you know, as I'm sure is a misunderstanding. Here are the characters you can, uh, that we're gonna, the people can audition for. Uh, here are the roles. Also, if you don't want to be a character, you can always be in the, you know, the behind the scenes, uh, coordinating, Lightroom, whatever you want to do like that. Uh, yeah, so that's also an option. But uh, yeah, here are the people, like, that you can audition for if you want a speaking part. And the Minecraft kid kind of looks at him and says, no, 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 you don't understand. I want to be the, I want to be the creeper. I want to be the creeper that comes in and goes, <laughs> the, uh, the, the guy kind of looks at him and is like, hey man, like, I'm sorry. These are the roles. I can't change it now. We've already got the script. I'm sorry. Minecraft's kid is not very happy. However, he still gets a role as more of a background character. I don't know exactly, but he does have some, he does have some airtime, but he doesn't have a ton. So anyways, right, uh, you know, for the next couple months or so, they're, they're, uh, they're practicing, they're learning their lines, they're on stage, and every single, and Robert just gets a sense from the Minecraft kid that he's just not feeling it, he's not super energized, he's just not super into it. Robert doesn't understand that the reason why is he is the Minecraft kid is super bummed out that he cannot be a creeper and explode and, like, do Minecraft stuff and James and the Giant Peach. Uh, I don't know. Robert just thinks that the kid just isn't super excited about it, which, you know, that's totally fine. I mean, that's not a crime or anything. So, anyways, right... Uh, you know, Robert and uh, everyone else starts to get prepared as it's only a couple weeks until the actual audition. And that's when Robert overhears the Minecraft kid talking to, like, his one other friend. And the Minecraft kid is like, man, like, I don't understand why I could have been the creeper. Like, my role now is, like, fine or whatever, but I just know that being the creeper would be so, so much better. I just know for a fact. And, you know, the director, I know he'll thank me. I know he'll be, like, proud of me if I do what I think is right. And when Robert hears this... He's just a little bit confused in general, because he's like, uh, I don't totally understand what this kid means, but whatever, I guess. And, uh, he doesn't understand that, you know, this kid is basically alluding that he will be, uh, that he will be taking this play into his own hands, basically. And, uh, yeah, you guys are about, are about to see what this, what the Minecraft kid is talking about, and it is quite interesting. By the way, if you made it as far into the video, comment Minecraft down below, I'll try and heart a bunch of those comments. Anyways, though... So yeah, the, uh, you know, they go back to, it's, let's say, skip ahead to, like, the day before. And it is, like, there's a lot of nerves, there's a lot of tension, basically everyone has their lines down. It's really just, like, 
the final rehearsal, the final rundown. And by the end of it, Robert and everyone else involved is really excited because they all did a very good job. And the director, you know, brings them together at the end of it and says, guys, you have like gone above and beyond my expectations. I've done this for many years. Like I've been the fifth grade play director every single time. And I don't want to point out favorites, but you guys have been very, very, very good. Like you guys have it way down. Congratulations. Tomorrow's going to be a victory lap. Let's go out and kill it. So they, you know, they leave with the cheer or whatever. And there's a lot of excitement in the air. The next day comes around and it is an exciting day, but not for the reasons why people believe it would be. Because as you will see, the Minecraft kid decides that he's going to take the fate of this play into his own hands. As you'll see how he does it. So anyways, right, you know, Robert and everyone, they're behind stage. And, uh, you know, they're doing, like, vocal warm-ups. They're going over lines one last time, even though everyone knows their lines inside out and backwards. If you wanted, like, say, hey, say your lines in Pig Latin, they could probably do it at this point. That's just the level that they have this play down to. So it's all really exciting. And uh, that's when Robert, because you know how you just, like, randomly think of stuff? has to do with, like, the way your mind works, like, the, the way that, like, stuff pops together, like, kind of got, like, neural network and things connect to each other. Very interesting how your mind works. But sometimes something will flash to something, will connect to something, will connect to something within a millisecond, and then immediately you'll think of something. So some kind of, like, something like that happened. I said something, like, way too much in my explanation, but something like that happened, and somehow Robert remembers just it flashes to him the Minecraft kid saying that he's going to take the play into his own hands. And he thinks about that for a second. And he's like, well, the Minecraft kid is here and he doesn't seem to be doing anything weird, so I guess he doesn't do it. And Robert, unfortunately, was very incorrect with this statement. Because anyways, uh, yeah, uh, it, the play goes on. It is, um, you know, it is like five minutes till everyone packs into the, like, the place where they're doing the play. It's like a little room with a bunch of chairs and a theater set and they got a whole like stage too which is pretty sick and uh, yeah everyone's packed in there everyone's really excited all the lower school kids are excited because like they not only get to see the play but it's also a half day for them so it's just a great day in general and it was on a friday so it's like the most hype combination of all time you get a play you get a half day and you're about to go home to start the freaking weekend like it is a great day for everyone right now but anyways Back to it. And uh, sure enough, you know, they're all just kind of like waiting around backstage and no one can find the Minecraft kid. The Minecraft kid is missing in action. And, uh, you know, the director is a little concerned while the Minecraft kid doesn't have a ton of lines. He still has one or two and he's still on stage. It's not like this is a background character that can like, or this isn't a guy behind the stage that maybe the play director can fill in for or have someone do his task. So the play director's like, okay. And he turns to another background character. Um... Or returns to everyone, basically says, if the Minecraft kid doesn't show, you remember his two lines or whatever, You d none of his lines are like, for example, the Minecraft kid doesn't have a line that sparks another person for like important dialogue. It's not like he asks an integral question. He basically just like adds a little bit of dialogue in here and there. So they're like, okay, basically if he's not here, all we gotta do is skip over where his line should be. I know that's gonna mess you guys up. Oh, like I know that could mess you up, but it really shouldn't. Um, you know, stuff like this always happens last minute. You guys are still going to kill it no matter what. Let's go out there. And the Minecraft kid is not there yet. So anyways, right, you know, the play continue. the play starts and, um, uh, they just kind of get into it. No problem at all. And when the first line of what the Minecraft kid is supposed to have comes up, they just skip it and they keep going. Still at this point, there's no Minecraft kid. However, that is about to change. So anyways... Robert is now behind stage because, like, for this next scene, he is not in, but he's going in in the next scene. And that's when he sees the door open behind stage. And someone walks in. It is the Minecraft kid. He walks in, and he is in a full creeper outfit he bought off Amazon. And this is when Robert remembers that the, the Minecraft kid was talking about how he was going to take this play into his own hands and that he wanted to be a creeper on the first day. And this is where Robert starts to put two and two together and is like, oh, no, dude. Oh, no. And so sure enough, the Minecraft kid, like the play director's like, where have you been? Like, we had to, like, change the entire play because of you. And Minecraft kid says, looks at him and says, thank me later, and then proceeds to walk right by him. No one stops him because they're so just like, what is this kid doing, right? 
And uh, he walks right, right by both of them, and he just walks onto the stage, and the director's like, oh my god. And the Minecraft kid walks onto the stage, and Robert kind of peeks his head around and kind of like looks at a... Uh, kind of like looks through the curtain so it's not obvious that he's watching but that he watches what the Minecraft kid's about to do. So the other kids are in the middle of a scene. And one of them notices the Minecraft kid walk on stage in a freaking creeper outfit. Like it is the most ridiculous thing of all time. And they're just looking at him. And in their heads they're just like, what the... F what? What's going on here? Like, what is going on here, bro? What? And uh, slowly, everyone on stage starts to get a little bit distracted as the Minecraft kid struts on stage in his creeper outfit. And, okay, so there's a set on stage with some, like, some trees or whatever for some reason. And uh, so they're still going through with the lines. But you know how, like, someone says the lines really confidently, but when someone is distracted, like when a Minecraft kid walks on stage in a full creeper suit, you might be distracted. They'll say their lines correctly but maybe with less focus and less passion. Basically, that's what was happening as all the kids got distracted. And the audience was a little bit confused, but they were also like, well, the fifth grade play can be experimental at times. Maybe they brought on a creeper just for like the ha-has because Minecraft's really popular right now. However, the Minecraft kid runs onto the stage and is like, goes up and stands next to everyone on the cast. Robert is watching this, completely aghast, completely like, oh my god, like, this is insane. And the Minecraft kid is just standing there next to everyone else. And it's really awkward because he's completely messing up the flow of everything. And the other kids, they continue on their lines, and they try and pretend, like, to not notice the Minecraft kid, which is extremely difficult, because he's in a full-blown creeper outfit, and he's just standing there when they were told, like, oh, just ignore him. Like, he's not actually here. It's fine. But no. The Minecraft kid is standing on stage. He's in his creeper outfit, and he's just looking at them. And you might be thinking, oh, well, the kid just got on stage for a scene or something. No. No, no, no. It gets worse. So in the middle of one of the kids saying their line, they hear this. <laughs> Kind of this, like, okay, maybe a better creeper noise than this. But the Minecraft kid in his creeper outfits starts hissing. And if you guys don't know, in Minecraft, the creeper is this green thing that goes around and hisses at people, then explodes. And so, yeah, the Minecraft kid starts hissing on stage in his creeper outfit. And Robert, who is someone who's played enough Minecraft to know how the creeper works, realizes, oh my god, this kid's gonna do, like, some kind of explosion-type thing. And so whoever was saying their lines, instead of just being distracted, they literally just stopped saying the line because this was, like, really just... This was bad. Like, they were completely distracted by this. They were completely taken off guard by this. And they all just started watching the Minecraft kid, kid go... Sss, and then all of a sudden, the Minecraft kid went... Kaboom! He just, like, said an explosion sound effect. And then he sprinted into the trees, right, the props that were behind him, knocking them all over and going, basically making explosion noises, and starts rolling around, breaking the bits of trees off that the art department worked on or whatever, stands up, kicks over another tree, pushes over another one, and then runs off stage. I'm just gonna let that scene sink into you guys for a little bit. The Minecraft Kid dressed up in a creeper suit, in the middle of a play, runs on stage, makes explosion noises, and then runs off stage after destroying all the props. So at this point, the director was like, this in his head was probably like, this play was so perfect, are these kids going to recover? However, the kids on set are actually should be actors when they grow up because they recover perfectly. They somehow make it into the storyline, like when the kids was like, what was that? Was that a figment of our imagination? And then another kid was like, wow, I think we're going crazy. Like, we gotta get, like, we gotta focus in. And then they continue on. They literally just continue on like nothing happened. Everyone in the audience started laughing, and they didn't, and some of them, I think some of them realized that something was up. But a lot of them, I supposedly thought that that was part of the play. So maybe he doesn't entirely ruin it. But it's not over yet. Because anyways, the, Robert sees the play director run to the other side of the stage and try and get to, like, the Minecraft kid. Try and catch him. However, the Minecraft kid is running around backstage in his creeper outfit trying to run away from the director. And when all this is happening, the kids on stage are, like, saying their lines or whatever. But the thing is, the Minecraft kid accidentally runs into something, like, something on the stage that was super, like, important to the structure of it. 
and he accidentally bumps into something that was really fragile. I don't know exactly what it was, but I know what happened next. And uh, the title, Minecraft Kid Ruins the School Play, wasn't because he ran on stage in a creeper outfit and exploded all the trees or whatever. It was because he did this. The Minecraft Kid ran into something that was super important for the, uh, for the curtains, and he knocked them over. So all of a sudden, the curtains fall down, fall down on all the cast members. A wooden beam falls, thankfully doesn't hit anyone. The backstage curtain falls down, exposing everyone in the back of the cast. The entire audience starts gasping and talking. It is a disaster. The whole stage falls apart, basically. And that, that's when the director comes on after a minute and says, technical difficulties, everyone, please, like, let's have a 20-minute recess. So the teachers are now informed to tell all the kids to go up and leave for a second, and that's when they're assessing the damage. And unfortunately, the damage done to the stage was so bad that they could not continue the school play. The kids were let out early, it was still a fun day of celebration, however, the Minecraft kid did ruin the school play for all of them. So the Minecraft kid did get in trouble, because, you know, this was against some kind of school rules. He didn't get, like, I think he might have gotten, like, suspended for a little bit. He didn't get expelled or anything, but the main thing he had to do was he had to write an apology letter that he had to read in front of the play director and everyone in the play, and because a lot of people were pretty upset because, like, that was their moment, and they weren't able to have their moment because the Minecraft kid ruined their moment, basically. And the Minecraft kid probably did feel pretty bad about it. But uh, yeah, moral of the story is even if you think something's a really good idea, um, make sure it's not you being a creeper and running on stage and blowing stuff up because that's probably a bad idea. Leave a like if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel, literally all you have to do is watch another video. It helps even more than you think. Bye. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? Today we got a story that I know you'll find interesting. So let's call the subscriber who submitted the story, Tim. So anyways, this all happened one day when Tim's friend, aka the Minecraft kid, who we're gonna call Max for the rest of the story, Tim's friend Max comes up to him and Ben. So Ben and Tim are sitting at a table. A lot of names for me to remember. Apologies in advance when I get these mixed up. But Tim and, Ma and Ben are sitting at a table and Max, their third friend, sits down and is like, guys, you need to come over this weekend. I have the craziest thing to show you. I'm not going to tell you about it till we get there, but you you just have to come. So when whenever someone says something like that, like you have to come over, I have the craziest thing to show you. I mean, you're going to show up to see what it is, man. You want to see what it is. So sure enough, Tim and Ben are like, all right, well, I mean, we can talk to our parents. I don't think I have anything and we'll see if we can come. So, um, you know, Tim and Ben, you know, they talk to their parents and eventually both their parents say yes. So, you know, Max is really excited. And that Saturday night, you know, Tim and Ben are going to go over to Max's house to see what this big surprise is. So another thing is like um, Tim, Ben and Max, all three of them, they really like, you know, video games. I think they're third, fourth, fifth type gray, like in that kind of range. The thing is, though, they don't really have access to video games. Uh, I think one of them has like an iPad, another one has like a phone or something. But they don't really have like a way to play these games, right? But they're a big fan of watching other people on YouTube or whatever play these games. And they have like, they all watch the same games on YouTube. So it was always something that they wanted to do eventually, like talk to each other about... Um, uh, not talk to each other, but actually play these games with each other. That was, like, a really big thing that they always wanted to do, but it just never happened. And, uh, you know, pa Tim and Ben were talking to each other, kind of speculating about what the big surprise that Max had for them, and they were like, what if he got, like, a gaming system? And they are like, yeah, that'd be really cool. And they kind of suspected that a little bit because that would be the big surprise, most likely. Um, but anyways, eventually Saturday comes around, they get to Max's house... And, you know, Max's mom meets them. She's like, hey, guys, how's it going? I hope it's all good for you guys. Like, I know that Max has been so excited. Or, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, Max has been so excited. And they're like, yeah, no, thank you so much for having us, whatever. And they don't say, thanks for having us, whatever. But, you know, they kind of say stuff like that. They go up to Max's room. And, uh, you know, sure enough, you know, Max, like, you know, opens the door. Um, and he's like, okay, guys, I here's the surprise. And he, like, points to you know, the room in front of, or not the, the bed in front of him, and the bed, Max's bed, has this kind of tarp over it, so, but there's very clearly something under the tarp, Max goes over, lifts up the tarp, and sure enough, is an Xbox with two controllers, 
And, uh, you know, Tim and Ben are actually really excited. Um, you know, they're like, oh my God, like, this is awesome. Yeah, and Max is like, yeah, like, I was thinking, like, all tonight we'd take turns playing, like, multiplayer games or whatever, and there's two controllers and three of us, so we just switch off every, every round or whatever. It's gonna be great. And, uh, you know, sure enough, they, uh, you know, they, they, they play for, like, a good two hours or whatever, and they're having a really good time. Tim and Ben and Max, they're, they're really enjoying themselves. However, Max said something kind of weird that only made sense later on in the story, but maybe with the title of this video, you'll understand it a little bit. Basically, Max goes on to say, like, about, like, an hour through, he's like, hey, guys, you gotta do me a favor, though. And they look at him, and they're like, what? And he's like, you can't mention this, like, the Xbox to my mom. And Tim was like, wait, why? Like, I'm confused. Tim for a second's like, oh, is he, is this like a gift from like, cause like, uh, Tim or Max's, uh, parents were divorced. So, you know, Tim was thinking, oh, maybe his dad got him this and he doesn't want his mom to like be jealous or something. I don't know. But I uh, you know Tim goes on to, or sorry, I, I'm already mixing up the names, but Max goes on to say, yeah, well, my mom was pretty reluctant in giving this to me. Um, cause she thinks that like video games are going to rot my brain and that I'm going to get addicted to them. So she did eventually give it to me. But the thing is, right, I, I don't want us talking about it at all because she'll think that that's all we do, and then she might take away the console, which wasn't true, as you'll see. However, Tim kind of thought to himself, oh, well, I mean, I guess that makes sense. I mean, some parents are really like, okay, I'll give my son, like, this video game system, and then when they play for more than 10 minutes, they're like, oh, my God, he is clinically addicted. We need to bring him to video game rehab. Oh, my God, my poor son. When, I mean, I've always thought it was funny because, like, parents tend to seem like television is totally fine. Watch as much TV as possible. But video games, something that's actually making your brain active and you need to solve puzzles instead of passively consuming. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Yes, you know, spending 12 hours a day playing video games every single day is probably, for most people, uh, not a good idea. And I understand why they'd be concerned about that. However, dude, like, I don't know. I've just seen a lot of parents be like, video games are bad, television good, where I'm like, I don't know. I think it's because you grew up with television, but not video games. Like, next generation of parents are going to be like, video games good, entering virtual reality bad. Like, it's always going to be like that, man, or whatever the next big thing will be. So Tim was like, not, he, he was convinced. He was like, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Tim and Ben then agreed. We're not going to say anything. Because, you know, we, we want to we wanna keep playing this game, basically. They're like, yeah, okay, I mean, we want to keep playing this. We don't want Max's mom to think that, you know, we're playing this too much. That's totally fine. So eventually, Max's mom invites them down for dinner. And they go down, and, you know, uh, you know, Max's mom is like, oh, I'm so excited you guys came here, whatever. And then she says, so, what have you boys been doing, like, for the last couple hours? And Tim and Ben kind of look at each other quickly because they're like, um, cause you know, they've been playing on the Xbox for the last two to three hours, but they can't, they were instructed not to let, you know, Max's mom know by Max. So Max, Max very quickly pipes up and is like, oh, we were, uh, we were just watching like a movie and she's like, oh, what movie? And he's like, uh, Star Wars. And she's like, oh, how did you guys watch that? I don't think we have the Star Wars DVD. And he's like, oh, Tim brought it. And Tim is like, uh, and she's like, oh, that's so cool. Tim, like. I love Star Wars. Like, I might want to come over and watch it with you guys. And Max gives her his mom like a like a look, like no. And she's like, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'll let you guys do what you're doing, right? And uh, so yeah, so that was a little awkward, but the rest of the dinner conversation was totally normal. And uh, they went up, and you know, I mean, Max wasn't didn't think that was too weird because I guess he just thought that, or Tim didn't think that was too weird. He just thought that like Max was trying to make it seem like oh they weren't playing the video games the whole time so his mom wouldn't get all scared or upset over kind of nothing, um, which makes sense. I get that. Anyways, though, they're upstairs, and they're just playing, right? They're just playing on the Xbox, and that's when they hear his mom, like, or not his mom, uh, Max's mom let out this, like, scream. All three of them drop what they're doing and run downstairs. Because, you know, when someone screams like that, I mean, it could be a lot of things, but normally a scream is like an indication of you need, like, assistance or you need help or something is wrong. So they run downstairs and they're just like, oh, my God, like, what's going on? Is there, like, an intruder? Does my mom need help? Do we need to, like, call the ambulance? I, I, who knows, right? So they run downstairs and 
once they get downstairs, they see that, you know, his mom or Max's mom is on the phone. And, uh, you know, Max's mom looks at them and kind of gives them like a like a thumbs up being like, it's fine. It's fine. Not like a thumbs up. Everything is great. But like a chill out. We're good. And as they're walking away, you know, Tim hears and everyone actually hears Max's mom is on the phone being like, like that trend. Like, I don't remember spending five hundred dollars. Like, I don't remember that we didn't have a $500 transaction on the car in the last couple of days. Like, I think there's a mistake. I don't know what this whole, uh, I don't know what this whole Xbox thing is. It sounds like something a hacker used. I'm pretty sure a hacker got into my account and bought something with my card so he could do more hacking. Like, that's definitely what happened. Like, what are we supposed to do? Do I have to, like, get a new credit card? I think my information is out there. And... Tim and Ben, they hear this and they look at each other because now they realize that, in fact, Max was not trying to keep the whole he has an Xbox and they were playing the Xbox thing away from his mom because his mom didn't like the Xbox. No, it's because she didn't know that he had one. And he also, he bought one with her card without her permission. So Max is kind of pretending like they didn't hear anything. So they go sit down to play more of the Xbox, but now Max is really, like, very clearly on edge. Like, he's a little bit freaked out. He's a little bit worried. He feels a little weird. And, I mean, it, it's very clear that he's starting to be a little bit stressed out. And Tim and Ben are kind of, like, in an awkward situation where it's not 100% clear to Max, or they don't think that Max knows for certain that they heard what his mom was saying. However, Tim and Ben now know the truth, and it's like, do they say something about it? Do they not? And that's when, you know, they hear, like, a, you know, a Max mom be like, hey, kids, can you come down here for a second? And Max's face just, like, goes, like, looks like he sees a ghost, right? He's like, oh, my God. So they go down there, and, you know, Max's mom is, like, has this, like, fake, sm you know when someone has kind of, like, a fake happy smile? But it's, like, very much put on because you have guests there. And it's, like, you know for a fact if it was just Max that she'd be, like, really, like, dropping her composure or whatever. Um, so, so basically, right, she's like, hey, guys, I just want to know, uh, were you guys, like, at any point playing Xbox today? And she looks at Tim and Ben. And Tim and Ben just freeze up. And they're like, uh, and Max is like, no, like, no, like, we really want to, like, we, like, he's like, no, 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 like, we don't have any video game systems, we were just watching people, like, we were watching Star Wars, and we watched a little YouTube of other people playing video games, and, uh, you know, uh, it, it, at this point, like, Max's mom was like, what, can you guys tell me what an Xbox is, is it, like, a hacker system, is it a, and at this point, Max is kind of like, okay, he doesn't want to say it's about video games because then she might get suspicious. He's like, oh, yeah, no, it's a hacker thing. Like, dark web, scary, um, hacking. Uh, it does stuff like that. And she's like, you boys wouldn't do anything with something like that. And he's like, Max is like, no, no, that stuff scares me. I would never. And she's like, okay, thanks for letting me know. And they all walk upstairs. And this time, when they're all upstairs, Tim kind of looks at Max. He's like, hey, man. Like, we, we heard what your mom was saying on the phone. Um, so I think we know, like, I think we know why we can't say anything to her. Uh, we're not going to say anything, but, you know, we just want to let you know that, like, we, we know what's up. And Max is like, oh, guys, I, I messed up. I really did. I just really wanted to play, like, the video game. Yeah, I wanted to play video games with you guys. And I was talking to my mom. I was like, for, for my birthday coming up. But my birthday is in, like, a couple months away. And when she asked what I wanted, I said I wanted to play, like, on a, on a video game system. Thankfully, I said PS4, not Xbox. But she was like, I hate, like, I, you know how I feel about video games. I'm not even comfortable watching, like, letting you watch them on YouTube or whatever that is. So, you know, guys, I just, I, I knew I wasn't getting a system anytime soon. So I took it into my own hands and, I don't know, I'm just in too deep now. You guys can't say anything, though. And, you know, Tim and Max, or Tim and Ben kind of look at each other, and then they look at Ben, and they're like, they're like, yeah, dude, like, I mean, we won't say anything, but, I mean, we're totally fine just chilling with you guys, like, or chilling with you, just not playing video games. Like, yeah, we want to, 
but you know that we, we we can in the future maybe not super soon but we 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 don't mind just like hanging out with you without doing that he's like i know i know what i did was stupid i i just i just can't i'm in too deep now guys and they were like yeah no it's fine like maybe we shouldn't be playing right now though just in case she walks in cuz that'd be a pretty bad look and uh it was almost as if <laughs> it was almost as if tim was like had an ability, a foresight into the future. Because as they're saying that, the door opens up, and sure enough, Max and Ben are holding the console things, and they're in the middle of playing a game, right? On the Xbox. And I'm pretty sure on the Xbox, it says, like, Xbox on it or something, but if it doesn't, the story still works. I wasn't given that exact detail. By the way, if you want to submit stories to me... You can do so to my Instagram account. It's in the description. It's how I got this story. Uh, all you got to do is follow me because um, I like big, big numbers next to my name and then DM me the story. Please don't DM me saying, do you want to hear a story? Because I don't respond to the DMs. I just read them and uh, write them down because it would clutter up my inbox way too quickly. So yeah, go ahead and do that if you have a story that you want featured on the channel. I will mix up the names and details for you. Don't worry. Anyways, though, um, so, you know, Max is sitting there, and he turns around, and they all turn around, and, you know, Max's mom is kind of looking at what she's seeing in front of her, and she's just examining everything, and it's, like, a good 30 seconds, like, not an exaggeration, it's a big, it's a good 30 seconds of silence as Max's mom comes to the realization that what she sees in front of her is, in fact, an Xbox, and it all starts to add up. So Max's mom, very uh, calmly, not as happily, not as fake happily as she was before, but very calmly is like, Tim, uh, Ben, do you mind if I talk to Max for a second? And they're like, oh, yeah, that's totally fine. So Max and Ben or Max, yeah, Max, uh, Tim and Ben immediately like power walk out of the room and they stand basically like they close the door behind them or either they close the door or Max's mom closes the door. They stand right outside the door. And they're about to start talking to each other like, oh, no, dude. And, but before they could, they just hear screaming going on. Like, did you like you just robbed me? You took my credit card to buy like a video game system. First of all, you know how I feel about video games, but you're going to go ahead and rob your own mother over them and just stuff like that. And he was absolutely getting chewed out. You could hear Max was like trying to defend himself like, mom, I swear. It was an accident. She's like, what do you mean it was an accident? How do you have an accident buying something online with my credit card, shipping it to this house, and sneaking it in here? How is that an accident? So yeah, but Max realized that he was really cornered. And it was like a good 20 minutes of being chewed out. And Max probably said a total of like 15 words, but no, it was not, it was not even worth saying anything. And she's like, I don't even know if we can get a refund on this. Like, I really hope that, like, you know, it resells for almost the full value because, like, anything minus the full value that we don't get on reselling it, if we don't get a refund, you're going to have to work over the summer and make that back doing lawns and stuff because kid was in, like, fourth grade or whatever, so you can't, like, send a target or something. He'd have to, like, really grind for lawns or something. And if they can only resell for, like, 300 bucks or something, that's a whole $200 you have to make up. And when you're only able to do lawns, like, $10 to mow a lawn... If that, like, that's going to take a second. So after about 30 minutes, like, Tim and Ben are just standing there like, uh, what do we do? And after about 20 minutes, right, Tim kind of turns to Ben and is like, dude, like, what do we do? Like, it's 9 o'clock now. It's getting later, uh, you know, but I really don't feel like this is the greatest atmosphere, you know? This is not a great atmosphere to be in. Like, I don't know if I want to keep going doing this. And, like, the door opens up. And Tim and Ben immediately turn and look because they're like, they probably weren't supposed to be listening to the whole thing. And, you know, Max's mom isn't going to be, like, outwardly as upset. I mean, she's obviously more upset with Max than Tim or Ben by a lot. But she probably isn't super happy with Tim and Ben because, you know, she said, oh, what are you guys doing? And they kind of lied to her. And then she said, do you guys know what an Xbox is? And they lied to her. I mean, they didn't say anything, but the fact that they didn't say... The fact that they didn't respond instead of telling the truth, is in fact, like, kind of a lie, like, it is partially a lie. So she was pretty upset about that, but she was, like, trying to hold her composure. She's like, hey, guys, 
Due to like some recent circumstances, I don't know if tonight is the best night for us to have a sleepover. Any chance like your parents can come pick you up and Tim and Ben, that was almost like the greatest news they could hear because this was an incredibly awkward situation. And Ben's like, I mean, my parents go to sleep kind of early, but, you know, I can probably, like, call them now. Do you have a home phone? And she's like, yes. So Tim and Ben both take turns on the home phone. And, you know, Tim's parents and Ben's parents were like, what? Why? Like, why? Because, like, they were planning to have a night alone to themselves, man. Whatever they were going to do. Probably watch some documentary about, like, space or something. Something really scandalous like that. So they are probably like, oh, like, really? Like, do you really have to come home? And they, they're like, Mom, I can't, like, explain everything. Or, Dad, I can't say it all right now, but I'll tell you when I get in the car. So eventually they're like, okay, fine. Like, I'm obviously, my kid wants me to pick them up. It's not like this kid lives, like, three hours away. Whatever. Like, I'll just do it. Sure. So eventually, like, the parents come and pick them up. And, you know, Ben or Tim, because Tim is a subscriber submitted, it gets in the car. And Tim's parents are like, why? Like, like you got to tell us, like, why we had to go and pick you up. Like, if we won't be mad if the reason is good enough. And Tim is like, don't worry, Mom. Like, the reason's pretty good. Here's what happened. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a good day. Today, we got three stories of Minecraft kids that I know you will enjoy. So let's just go ahead and jump into the first one. We're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story, Peter. And by the way, all these stories are on Spotify, linked in the description. You'll probably even hear them about an hour earlier before they go up on here if you find them on Spotify. Anyways, so Pete, we're going to call the first subscriber who submitted this story, Peter. And anyways, right, Peter was in a class, and in Peter's class, there was an assignment that they all had to do. And this assignment was the, what do you want to do when you grow up assignment? And you got kids coming in being like, oh, I want to do YouTube. Oh, I want to be a doctor. Oh, I want to be president of the United States. Oh, I want to do your mom. There's like a lot of things that people came in and said like, oh, this is what I want to do, right? So it was kind of like done that you had a presentation, you would uh, go home and kind of prepare a little bit and then you go up there. I think a couple stories ago, someone else submitted something with uh, their class had a similar type thing. And I know I had something like this. So this might just be a thing that happens to everyone in like second grade. I don't know. Tell me in the comments if it's true or not. But anyways, right, so sure enough, you know, Peter wanted to be, he wanted to be a doctor, which is pretty standard, at, like pretty standard response. When I was 10, I wanted to be a doctor, and then I learned about medical school. But anyways, right, so, you know, Peter, you know, has this little thing. He wants to be a doctor or whatever. And eventually, let's just skip forward to the day of class. Let's just skip forward to the day where, you know, they're actually presenting. And, uh, you know, Peter goes up there. He has a doctor's costume he bought or whatever. And, uh, you know, sure enough it's fine, it's whatever. That's not the interesting thing. There's a kid in Peter's class who we're gonna call the Minecraft kid because all, all, all bro does is play Minecraft. Like literally every, every single day when he gets back from school, doesn't even do his homework, screw that, does Minecraft. In class, he's asleep so he can stay up all night to play Minecraft. This bro's life literally revolves around Minecraft. Don't get me wrong, Minecraft is a cool game. I use it for all my background footage. It has a integral place in my childhood. Like, I love Minecraft. Great game, right? However, please have a life outside of it. That, that, that's all I ask. That's all I ask, man. But anyways, right, sure enough, the Minecraft kid walks up to the front of the class. And uh, everyone was kind of expecting him to say, like, I don't know. I want to, uh, I don't know, work for a video game company. I want to work for Mojang. I want to be a computer pro programmer so I can make video games or whatever. Or maybe even, like, I want to stream on Twitch, which is, like, even that's a little, that's a little iffy. Which, you don't even want me to go into the statistics of how difficult that is. Anyways, and I won't, because I want watch time and good retention. So sure enough, you know, the, the Minecraft kid goes up there, and Peter's kind of interested to see what he's going to say, because he's kind of expecting the Minecraft kid to say something a little bit goofy. Like, not too crazy, but just a little bit goofy. Just a little bit on the goofy side, right? And the Minecraft kid goes up there and says... You know, all I want to do when I grow up is just keep playing Minecraft. And he brings with him, like, you know that, like, fake, you know, Minecraft sword, like a foam one that, like, you can buy for, like, $20 or something? I just, I just know it because I got it for my fifth grade birthday party, and I might still have it, or I might have had my mom thrown it out without me knowing, which is a shame, but whatever, right? And so he brings this, and he kind of swings it around. It's like, yep. All I do every day is I play Minecraft. When I go home, I go home and I play Minecraft. And I stay up all night to do it. That's why I'm never paying attention in class or doing anything like that. 
you know, and I want to let you know that no one can tell me otherwise. All I'm going to do with my life is play Minecraft every single day. And the teacher's like, hey, I, like this wasn't, this project wasn't about, you know, what's your favorite hobby? What's your favorite pastime? This project was about like, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Or what do you want to do as a profession? There's a difference between, you know, choosing to do something casually and choosing to do something professionally. And the thing is, right, this wasn't even a teacher who's like, if you're not a doctor or a lawyer, then you're not a real worker. Like it wasn't one of these like old fashioned teachers who doesn't understand like, new, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say, like, a teacher that doesn't understand kind of the new scheme of jobs. The teacher literally let a kid say, hey, I want to be a YouTuber, but if that doesn't work, I'm going to go to college to for digital marketing or something like that. The teacher was fine with that. The teacher understands the new landscape of work. But the thing is, there's a difference when saying between saying, hey, I want to pursue playing video games online, and if that doesn't work, then I want to do X, and saying, I want to sit inside and do video games all day, specifically Minecraft all day, because, bro, let me just let you know, there's really no professional Minecraft leagues that pay you anything, right? There, I, I might be wrong. There might be, like, a professional Minecraft league that pays you, like, a couple hundred bucks if you win a tournament, but, dude, that's not enough to sustain yourself. Like, there are no, like, maybe, maybe if you wanted to say, yeah, I want to be professional, like, Counter-Strike or a game like that, maybe. But even that is a massive stretch. And sure enough, the Minecraft kid didn't even say anything like that. He just said, I want to sit inside and play Minecraft all day. So Peter's just like, oh, boy, because Peter's sitting down. He's watching the teacher really just, like, not be cool with this. And the Minecraft kid not even, like, adapting on the spot. Because one might have thought that, okay... The Minecraft kid realizes that the teacher is not a fan of what he just said, and that maybe if he wants to save his grade, I don't know, adapt it a little bit? Like, just switch things up a little bit? I, I, I don't know, man. Like, just be like, oh, haha, what I meant is I want to go and learn how to make video games. Like, sure, that's fine. Go to school for programming or something like that. But the Minecraft kid doubles down and says to the teacher, you know, what I want to do when I grow up is I just want to sit at home and do video games. I don't want to do anything else. I don't want anyone to bother me. And I just want to play Minecraft 24 seven. And you know, Peter's just like, oh boy, this teacher's not going to be happy. And the teacher's like, like Minecraft kid, says his actual name, but it's like Minecraft kid. I want you to know that, you know, I'm going to give you, you know, sit back down, step outside, and I'm going to give you 10 minutes to come up with a real job. Like, I'm going to give you 10 minutes, and I'm being very gracious right now, because at the moment, you have a fail on this assignment. Not like the Minecraft kid was really caring about his grades. I mean, he handed in zero homework and basically was failing everything else. But the teacher's like, I'm going to give you 10 minutes of standing outside to come up with something new. And when you're ready, come back in and you may present again. So the Minecraft kid very angrily like walks outside. And the teacher's like, all right, who's coming up next? And the teacher's like, okay, Ben, how about you come up? And within 10 seconds, the door slams open again. And the Minecraft kid says, I'm ready. So the teacher, I don't know if the teacher was just being hopeful because... I mean, come on, he was out for like three seconds. You really think he came up with a new job? No. The teacher might have just been hopeful and was like, oh, that was fast, sure. Come on up, like, wh what's, what's the deal? Like, what's going on? And like, come tell me about your new job. So Minecraft Kid walks to the front of the class again and says, when I go get grow older or when I'm an adult, I just want to sit inside and do Minecraft all day. I said it before and I'm saying it again, boom. The teacher's like kind of turns to Minecraft Kid and says, I was generous with you. Like, I gave you time to reconsider what you're doing. Like, to, to pr present again. Like, this isn't just what you want to do. This is like a presentation. This is an assignment for the front of the class. And at this point, the Minecraft kid says, so you're saying I can't do that? And the teacher is like, yes. I'm saying that when you're older, you're not going to be able to do that. Sure, you can play video games on, like, in, on the part. Like, you can, play, you can partially play video games. That's totally fine. But you can't entirely play video games. You've got to do other stuff with your life as well. You have to find something that's going to bring you an income. You have to do something more productive than that. And, you know, the Minecraft teacher, uh, the Minecraft teacher, sorry, I'm jumbling my words. The teacher probably would have even been fine if he said, I want to, you know, 
play my I want to make content around me playing Minecraft. The teacher was in tune with, you know, you can entertain like entertainment is decentralized. Almost anyone can make entertainment. Not almost ever anyone will be successful, but almost anyone can. This isn't like the 80s and 90s where really you either had to like score a really big role in TV or radio or a movie. You can just post something on your phone. It's incredible. So the, the at this point the Minecraft kid was starting to get really angry. And he's like Teacher, I'm going to give you to a count of three to take that back. And the teacher is so taken aback by the fact that the Minecraft kid just said, I'm going to give you a count of three to say, to like pretend that you didn't just say what you said. But the teacher's like, are you insane? The Minecraft kid is like, three? And the teacher's like, you don't understand. They're like, I am supposed to be the one giving you a countdown. Minecraft kid's like, two? And the teacher's like, like, what is so wrong with me saying that you can't just sit around and play Minecraft all day? Like, that makes total sense. Like, you, I asked you in the presentation what you should do as a job. And you said sit around and play Minecraft. How do you expect to make any money from that? And the Minecraft kid's like, one. The teacher's like, what? What are you going to do at the end of the countdown? And the Minecraft kid steps over and just like kind of like goes down on one knee and is like bent down, is like, it starts making like weird noises. He's like, and the teacher's like, dude, what are you doing? Okay. Teacher probably didn't say dude, but the teacher's like, uh, what are you doing? And the Minecraft kid jumps up, springs up, and is like, you, I will fight you in a 1v1 PvP battle. And he grabs his Minecraft sword and starts like swinging it around, trying to be like intimidating. But dude, it was a foam sword. You're playing Minecraft. You're not intimidating anyone, dude. Like, that's just not happening. And he starts swinging around. He's like, wow, 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 wow. and the teacher's like, okay, I just, uh, like, wh wh what? Why? What are you doing? Like, stop. Stop it. Get some help, bro. Like, what's going on? And he's like, you said that I could do Minecraft every single day for the rest of my life. And the teacher's like, yeah, and I, uh, I, I stand by that. Minecraft kid's swinging around his foam swords like, you're trying to, you're, you don't want me to be happy. You want me to be unhappy. And for that reason, it's you versus me in a PvP fight. And at this point, Peter is just sitting there just trying to comprehend how everything escalated to this point. Because sure, like the Minecraft kid and the teacher were kind of fighting a bit and they weren't happy with each other. But the Minecraft kid really gave the teacher a 3 to one countdown and then entered into Minecraft PvP mode. He has his like sword out, swinging it all around. And at this point, right, you know, Peter's just like, okay, something's going, like, this is not going to end well. At this point, right, you know, he's like swinging around his sword. The Minecraft kid's like, I'm going to give you to another count to three to give me a 100% and tell me that I can 100% play Minecraft for the rest of my life. The teacher looks at him and says, no, I would be lying to you if I said that. And Minecraft kid is like, fine, you've chosen your fate. Minecraft kid's like, starts swinging his sword. The teacher says, if that foam sword even touches me for a second, you're failing this assignment and you're going straight to the principal's office. The Minecraft kid says, I will give you another count of three to reconsider it, everything. <laughs> the Minecraft kid is, is obviously realizing at this point that he's in way too deep and he's also not winning. So he thinks that he, if he keeps on saying, I'm going to give you till the count of three, that he is somehow going to win this whole thing. And sure enough, the Minecraft kid counts to three. The teacher's like, okay, like what? What's going to happen now? The Minecraft kid's like, I warned you. Minecraft kid takes his, like, his foam sword, swings, and, and goes, bop, makes contact with the teacher. And at this point, the teacher grabs the sword, rips out of the Minecraft kid's hand, goes over, holds onto both the Minecraft kid's shoulders, and starts walking him out the door. He's like, all right, buddy, uh, that's time to go to the principal's office for you. So the Minecraft kid and the teacher walk out the door, and everyone else is kind of just sitting there like, uh... What? Anyways, next story, we're going to call the subscriber Chris. So Chris has a cousin who we're going to call the Minecraft kid, right? And Chris doesn't really get to know his cousin that well. He doesn't see him that often. But Chris and his mom are over at his aunt's, yeah, it'd be his aunt's house. And, you know, this is the first time, you know, Chris has seen his aunt in years. And the last time Chris saw his cousin, his cousin was like four and didn't, it was really shy, didn't want to talk that much. Now his little cousin was eight years old and was apparently a Minecraft fanatic. He liked playing it so much. He knew everything about it. He watched Minecraft YouTubers when he wasn't playing Minecraft. In his sleep, he dreamed about fighting the Ender Dragon. 
And, uh, you know, Chris didn't really know that that much, but Chris was kind of told by, because Chris asked his mom, like, as they're driving there, like, what, what, what should I know? Like, I have to hang out with this kid because Chris was told, oh, you get to hang out with your cousin for a little bit. It'll be good for you. Chris is like 16 at this point. He's not going to get along with his cousin on a lot of things. They're not going to have a ton in common. They can't talk about girl troubles at the same level, right? They can't talk about, oh, wow, math is so difficult. Yeah, because Chris's little cousin would be like, yeah, a simple addition really sucks. <laughs> He'd be like, uh, Sure. So sure enough, you know, Chris's mom was like, yeah, okay. So all I know is he's a big fan of like that game Minecraft. And Chris is like, yeah, I've played it a little bit. And by Chris saying that he's played it, literally all he means is, yeah, he and his friends have played some like survival servers at some points. Like they'll be really into it for a week and then they'll not play it for a year. That's how a lot of people actually get into it. You get super into Minecraft servers with your friends. You play for two weeks. You literally play 12 hours a day and then you never touch the game again for week, for years. It, that's just how it goes with a lot of people. So Chris and his mom get there and Chris's aunt and Chris's cousin, right? Chris's cousin's actually in a different room, but Chris's aunt greets them. They're like, oh my God, I haven't seen you so long, Chris. You're so much older now. And Chris is in his head is like, yeah, that's kind of how time works, bro. But whatever, right? Sure enough, you know, Chris's aunt was like, hey, Chris, I just want to let you know your little cousin's in the other room and he would love to see you. Did he actually love to see him? Well, I mean, we'll see him in a second. So sure enough, you know, Chris goes into the other room and there's the little cousin who's sitting there with an iPad and he's playing, you know, pocket edition Minecraft. And Chris is like, yo, what's up? bro, like, hey, it's me, Chris. I don't remember if you remember me, but I'm your cousin. And Chris's little cousin's like, yeah, I don't, like, hi, how are you doing? And Chris is like, oh, I heard you like Minecraft. And, you know, Chris's little cousin's like, I do. Do you like Minecraft? And Chris in his head is like, he's like, yeah, I'm going to say yes, we're going to bond, and this will be less awkward. So Chris is like, yeah, yeah, I like Minecraft. It's, it's cool. Like, I, I enjoy it. And Chris's little, bro, Chris's little uh, cousin immediately says, so you're an expert? And Chris is like, I don't know, but I played a little bit. And Chris is like, okay, well, riddle me this. So uh, well, well, when, when you kill the Ender Dragon and there's the Ender Dragon egg, how exactly are you to get it? And uh, Chris, who's never actually completed the game because he just plays a little bit, right? He's like, oh, you just mine it, right, with a pickaxe. The little cousin's like, meh, wrong, one strike against you. Next question. And Chris is kind of just thinking, wait, what? Like, is this some kind of like, well, like, what are we doing here? And, you know, the, the little cousin's like, okay, so if you're fighting an Enderman and you have a bucket, like, what will, a bucket of what, like, what kind of liquid will Enderman not be able to, like, fight you in? And uh, Chris is like, I don't know, um milk because he remembered he's able to milk a cow and chris's little cousin's like oh my god meh 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 wrong water enderman will not fight you in water i two strikes chris two strikes and chris is kind of like oh my god like this was this was supposed to be a bonding experience this is the opposite of a bonding experience right now like this is not a bonding experience this is crazy and sure enough you know chris is like okay man well i can play minecraft with you. he's like man final question and i need you to answer this and chris is like uh okay and so this little cousin's like well i need to think about it i gotta make it good and you know you're gonna suffer the consequences if you don't like if you don't finish if you don't get this question correct so the little cousin's like okay who is the popular minecraft youtuber who has the minecraft manhunt series and is green and the thing is, right, Chris kind of grew up on, you know, the old school Minecrafters. So he was like, uh, Captain Sparkles? And his little brother's like, no, it's Dream, you idiot. You aren't actually a Minecraft fan. You lied to me. And, and at this point, Chris is like, dude, it's not simply not that deep. And the Minecraft kid's like, no. You betrayed my trust. And the Minecraft kid runs over to him and sinks his teeth into his arm. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Minecraft down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. And I'll just, it'll help me know how many people actually made it to the end of the video. 
I really do appreciate it when you guys comment the secret word down below so I can see all the names and faces. And if you want to support the channel, just continue watching more videos after this one. Literally just watching more videos supports the channel more than you can ever imagine. And also, it's on Spotify. And if you do watch and listen on Spotify, please rate five stars. And if you want to submit your own stories of Karen, spoiled kids, uh, I don't know, Minecraft kids, crazy things happening in high school, submit them to either my Twitter or Instagram. You can do so by following me on those platforms and then DMing me on there. Uh, by the way, join the Discord server, link in description. Use code CONNORPUGS for 10% off gamer subs. Helps you, helps me. Hey, and let's get right back into it. So Chris looks down at his little cousin who has bit him at this point. The little cousin has sunk his teeth into Chris's skin. Thankfully, he doesn't break it and draws blood or anything. And he's just looking at it. He's like, oh, my God. And, like, he shakes him off. He's like, dude. And the little cousin's like, well, that's your punishment for not actually enjoying Minecraft. You're a fraud, a phony, and a, a, a fake lover of Minecraft. You don't actually love Minecraft. You are a fraud, and that's your punishment. So Chris very angrily walks out. And like, you know, the, the, uh, Chris's mom and his, his Chris's aunt are looking like, oh, what just happened? And Chris is like, like my, like my little cousin, like just bit me because he says I'm a fraud, <laughs> fraud alert, fraud owned. But he's like, you know, he's like, he thinks I'm a fraud. Cause I didn't understand all this, like really obscure trivia about Minecraft. Like, can you believe this? Like, this is ridiculous. Oh my God. And at this point, you know, you know, Chris's mom's like, oh, no. And Chris's aunt's like, oh, I forgot to say he's really touchy about the Minecraft subject. And Chris's mom turns to Chris's aunt and is like, you told me that's what he really liked. And Chris's aunt goes on to say, well, yeah, he really likes it, but he takes it really seriously. And if you say you like Minecraft, he assumes that you like it at his level. And he's had so many people before say that they like Minecraft but they just like it casually, that he now thinks that, well, he now thinks that anyone who says that and doesn't know all the obscure trivia that he knows is a fakester, a fraud, or a phony. At this point, you know, Chris is kind of just like, well, why didn't you tell me this before? And you could hear the little cousin screaming, get that fraud out of here, mom. I don't want to hang out with that fraud. And sure enough, Chris's aunt goes into that room and you hear her saying like, you better behave yourself. This is unacceptable behavior. You hear me? This behavior is unacceptable, and I, I won't stand for it. I simply won't stand for this. You you don't see your you only see your cousin like once a year. This is insane. And Chris is kind of just listening to this, and Chris's mom's like, Chris, I'm so sorry. I did not know. And Chris is like, it's fine. Like, how would you know? Like, I don't know anyone else who does this. Like, I, I simply could not blame you if, even if I wanted to. Like, the situation going down right now, it's just so ridiculous. Like, I, I, I just can't blame you at this point. And so Chris's aunt comes back out and it's like, once again, I am so sorry. Like, none of this was ever supposed to happen. Like, you know what? You can go back in there. And he said they just calmed down. And Chris kind of just looks at his aunt. It's like, he said that? And Chris's aunt's like, well, I mean, he implied that with his actions. Basically, just meant Chris's aunt went in there and kind of like shouted at him till he quieted down. And, uh, you know, sure enough, Chris decides, okay, I'll go back in there. And he, when Chris walks back in, he's like, hey, dude. And, you know, his cousin, the Minecraft kid, is just on the iPad. And, you know, he walks in a little bit. And uh, Chris is like, so, playing some Minecraft? And the little cousin's like, not like you would know. And Chris is like, well, okay, when I said I liked Minecraft, I literally just meant I played a little bit with my friends. I think it's a fun game. And the little cousin's like, if you thought it was a fun game, then you would have known my trivia. And uh, Chris is like, well, not necessarily. Like, just because I don't know every detail about the game doesn't necessarily mean I don't like the game. Like, that just doesn't sound fair to me. And Chris is like, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I, I enjoy playing with my friends. Doesn't mean I don't watch it on YouTube, so... That trivia question about knowing that guy, like, doesn't care, like, it doesn't matter. Like, I really don't understand why you bit me. And, you know, the little cousin is just, like, playing his Minecraft, but then he pauses his game. So, you know, it's about to get real serious, right? And he closes out his iPad. He's like, I bit you. 
because you're a fraud. You're a fraud who says he likes Minecraft, but really doesn't. Little kid turns around, jumps, and bites Chris on the other arm. And Chris is like, oh my God, pushes him off again. Chris st storms out of that room and goes over and is like, mom, he bit me again. And Chris's mom's like, oh dear. And his aunt's like, oh. Chris's aunt runs back into the room, shouts at the Minecraft kid again, and shuts the door. And it's like, Chris, you know what? I haven't seen you in a while. How about you stay out here with your mom and I, and we'll just have a discussion here. You and your cousin can, um, you guys can uh, meet each other again, maybe in a couple years, when he's out of this phase. Hopefully this is a phase. I really hope this is a phase. So the final Minecraft story, Minecraft kid story, we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted it, Bart. Because uh, if you couldn't tell, I got Peter, Chris, and uh, Bart, you know, Family Guy, Simpsons. I'm trying to do themes with these names now. Just keep me and myself interested. Anyways though, right? So, uh, you know, Bart was in class and he was in third grade at the time. He was younger on the younger side for sure. I don't know exactly what grade. This could have well been second grade, but let's just say third grade for the, just because. And so what they were supposed to do is they were assigned that, you know, they had, they could choose any country in the world and they got to decide, um, they would have to research it, make a little presentation and eventually present it in front of the entire class. So, uh, there was a kid in class who we're just going to call the Minecraft kid. He wasn't even that obsessed with Minecraft. He just really enjoyed the game. And it gets interesting because the Minecraft kid, um, he chose, he mixed up basically, right? He mixed up the nether, the nether, like in Minecraft, and the netherlands, like the place. So anyways, right, it's the day that they're presenting. Bart is sitting next to the, the, the Minecraft kid, and he leans over, and he's like, hey, dude, like, what did, what, where did you choose? And he's like, oh, the nether. And Bart's like, what? Like, you have to choose a country. And the Minecraft kid's like, yeah, it's next to, like, Sweden, Norway. It's, like, in that, uh, that part of Europe. And Bart's like, oh, Okay, so Bart knows about the Netherlands, right? He just kind of thinks that, you know, the Minecraft kid learned like a short, like a shorthand way to call like, oh, maybe the cool people call the Netherlands the nether, and I just don't know any better. Um, the thing is, though, so Bart went up, he did his presentation, it was totally fine, but the Minecraft kid, he went up to go do his presentation, and um, uh, the thing is, right, when the Minecraft kid went to go look up, like, the Netherlands, right, he must have written down the Netherlands wrong and wrote down the nether and maybe couldn't read the rest of it. So when he typed into Google the nether, he got, like, Minecraft wiki. He got, like, w he got articles about the in-game Minecraft universe, the nether. And, and he actually ended up, because, look, he's in second or third grade, you know, reality and uh, fiction is kind of a blurred line for kids at that point. So he went up there and he did an entire presentation talking about like, here's photos. And he literally took screenshots from like a really good texture pack of the nether. He's like, up here, like this far up into Europe, he's like, it's really fiery. It's, uh, there's these floating fire monsters. <laughs> there's these, like, pig creatures that come after you if you provoke them. And the entire class, like, is just looking at him like, uh, bro. And the teacher just has this smile on his face, like, okay, how are we going to handle this, boys? Like, how are we going to go about this? And, you know, the subscriber, or not the subscriber, the Minecraft kid finishes up his presentation. And, uh, you know, everyone is kind of clapping a little bit. And there's, oh, for every single person, there's a point where people can ask questions. A lot of the times, like, the kids would be like, I don't know. Like, if it's not my presentation, I don't know it. Um, but one of the kids raised his hand, and, you know, the Minecraft kid pointed on him. And, you know, he said, um, like, nice presentation, but I'm pretty sure the nether isn't real. And the Minecraft kid starts laughing. He's like, what do, what do you mean the Minecraft, the nether isn't real? And he's like, um, I, I, I don't think you, uh... I don't think you put down the name right. And the Minecraft kid is really confused, and he turns to his teacher. And the teacher is like, oh, okay, I gotta speak up. The teacher's like, yeah, so, Minecraft kid, I hate to say it, but I think you wrote down the name wrong. I, I was looking it up while you were doing your presentation, because I was pretty confused. And I looked up the nether into Google, and apparently it's a place in a video game. Uh, you were supposed to do the netherlands.
And the Minecraft kid got super embarrassed because he has this whole presentation. He was 100% confident that this place really existed. And he was kind of just told that, oh, well, actually, truth is, you just messed up the whole thing. But the teacher's actually was a pretty cool dude because the teacher wanted to say, like, man, like, he's like, hey, all I asked you to do was to do a presentation, you know, on a place that, you know, I thought that, you know, to do a, pres a presentation, do the work, do the research, put it together and present it to the class. He said, hey, you did the research. I can tell you put in the work. This is a great presentation. And you presented it in front of the entire class. Yes, you didn't do exactly what I asked, but you didn't do, do so maliciously and your intentions were good and you put in the effort. He said, I'm going to grade you as if you did a real country. And, uh, you know, the Minecraft kid was very happy to hear this because he more or less kind of like dodged a bullet there because I'm sure the Minecraft kid and Bart, especially like when Bart was sitting there, he was worried for his friend because he was friendly with the Minecraft kid. He was worried that he was going to get like a check minus. Basically, they had check plus check and check minus as their system. They got grades when they were older, but he was afraid he was going to get a check minus or maybe, oh, the teacher wouldn't understand and would call up his parents being like, your son isn't taking this class seriously. When you know the son was taking it seriously. He just didn't understand the instructions. He didn't get the memo, right? And it's cool to see teachers like this really come together and understand Understand that, you know, if the intention is good and the work was put in, really that's all that, you know, you're supposed to be doing in school. So the Minecraft kid sat down and he turned over and Bart turned over like, hey man, I'm sorry that I didn't say anything. I honestly thought when you said the nether, you were just doing shorthand for like the Netherlands. I thought that was a nickname or something. And the Minecraft kid's like, you're good, dude. Like, it's totally fine. Like, I should have like known that. And, you know, and Bart was like, dude, there's actually a cool presentation. Like, I kind of like Minecraft myself. And, you know, I learned a thing or two about Minecraft. Like, I, if I'm going to speed run the game, I'll think about your presentation. And, you know, the Minecraft kid took that, like, you know, pretty nicely. And he smiled back. And, you know, yeah, after that, you know, the, the Minecraft kid actually got a check plus for his presentation. Because the Minecraft kid put in a check plus worth of work. And most kids got check pluses. Some got checks if they really clearly didn't put in any work. But the majority of kids got check pluses, including the Minecraft kid, who did a presentation on the nether, which I just thought was pretty funny, but also W teacher, 100% W teacher. He gets it. He's the goat. Anyways, if you want to support the channel, keep watching videos after click this on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? Hope you're having a good day because today we have a pretty crazy story of this Minecraft kid who believes that after playing Minecraft that he needs to go back to his caveman roots. And going back to his caveman roots literally just meant not showering, I guess. And he thinks that this will get him all the ladies. And let me just say that uh, that may or may not be the case, but you'll have to wait and see. So anyways, sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and let's just jump right into this. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story, Alex. And by the way, my Instagram is in the description. It's also Connor Pugs. Go follow me there, and you can submit stories like this to me on there. I'll get to them when I get to them. And anyways, so Alex was in eighth grade and he had this kid in his class who we're going to call ben yes we're bringing back the name ben for random secondary characters and anyways right ben was like you know he wasn't like super into minecraft actually he knew nothing of minecraft until like a couple weeks before the story and that's when he was introduced to the game by one of alex's friends uh, we don't need a name right and anyways right ben got super super into it uh, Alex doesn't really know how Ben didn't know what Minecraft was. Like, it wasn't like Alex wasn't, or it wasn't like Ben wasn't on the internet. Like, I think Ben might have heard of it, but he'd never, like, he didn't know what it was. So when one of Alex's friends introduced Minecraft to him, Ben basically disappeared for, like, two weeks. Like, he went to school and everything, but he stopped being on social media, disappeared as soon as he could, like, didn't show up to any anything. He was just in his room as for as long as he could, playing Minecraft. And I don't mean, like, I don't know, like, parkour servers like this, or player versus player servers. I mean, he was playing, like, vanilla, straight up, your traditional Minecraft. That's all he was doing, and he was in love with it. And three weeks later, he came into school one day, and he's like, Alex, buddy... I, ha I need to tell you something, a revelation I've come to. And Alex is like, yeah, what's good, dude? And Ben's like, brother, we need to return to the caveman days. I was playing Minecraft a couple days ago, and I came to a realization that we need to return to our caveman roots. And I have started that already. Alex is like, 
what do you mean by that? And at this time, Alex was, not- was noticing quite a pungent aroma coming from Ben, right? You know, he didn't want to say anything. He didn't want to be mean. He didn't want to be, you know, cruel or anything. But let's just say that, you know, Benny old boy was not smelling the greatest. He was kind of, uh, he was, uh, he had this essence, um, this odor, this aroma, some might call it, that uh, wasn't the greatest, to put it the, to put it lightly, right? So anyways, uh, you know, uh, Alex or Ben goes on to say, yeah, so I've been playing Minecraft, and it just, it just feels so good. It feels so natural. I mean, yeah, playing a block game feels natural, but whatever. I like Minecraft. I'm not saying it's not, but he goes on to say, and I realized that, you know, my failures in the lady department, the reason why women don't love me is because I, I'm too much like, I'm too much, I'm not like the natural man. And when they see me as the natural caveman, they will instinctively fall in love with me. And, and Alex just looks at Ben. It's like, Ben, uh, I don't know where you're going with this, but I really don't have a good, I don't have a good feeling about this. And Ben's like, Alex, I'm here to convert you to my ways. And Alex is like, what? He's like, are you trying to, like, sell me an MLM or something? Like, where are we going with this? And Ben is like, no, 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 Alex. Return to the caveman. Return to the caveman, Alex. This is what Steve has taught me. And and, and Alex is like, Ben, Ben, are you okay? Like, if you need help, like, I, I can help you get He's like, no, you need help, man. You don't understand. He said, look, I've returned to my caveman roots, but by not doing any of the the showering that is in our modern day societies. You really think putting chemicals in our hair and rinsing it with fake water? Alex is like, fake, fake water? What are you, he's like, I, these are details. These are details, Alex, don't question it. It's whatever, you don't understand. The natural aroma that comes from the human body has been programmed for trillions of years. And Alex is like, I don't think, humans have been around for trillions of years and Ben's like that's not the point the point is the aroma the natural musk sure you can buy cheap garbage from like I don't know Armani or Gucci their their fragrance is terrible they'll destroy the, the the brain cells but the true caveman odor is what Steve has taught me and uh Alex is like so are you gonna like I don't know spend more time outside get more sunlight exercise, eat, like, not processed stuff like the caveman too. And Alex is like, whoa, or Ben is like, whoa, Alex, chill out. Let's not go crazy. Let's not go cuckoo banana mode on me, okay, man? Okay, man, is that good? Like, let's not go crazy. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not dropping everything for this caveman thing, but I am embracing the natural musk. And Alex just looks at him and says, so Ben, you're, you're not really changing anything about what you do besides, besides not showering. That... That's the only difference. And Ben's like, well, no, no, no. It's not just not showering. It's embracing my natural musk, my natural odor. It will instinctively make women love me. And Alex is like, Ben, as your friend, I guess, I, I, I strongly suggest you don't do this. And Ben is like, you know what, Alex? I understand that you're a hater, and that's okay. Alex is like, I don't think I'm a hater. but And Ben's like, silence, look. You know that girl over there, Ava? You know how, you know, the prettiest girl in our class. I've always had a crush on her, and I never had a chance. And Alex is like, well, that's also something that has not changed. And Ben's like, look, I'm going to go up to her, and you're going to see. I'm going to go up to her. I'm going to lift up my arms so my armpits are bare. Let her embrace my natural aroma, my natural odor, and you will see that she will just fall in love with me. I'm going to ask her out. And she's going to say yes. It's not even going to be her saying yes. It's going to be her subconscious breaking through to the surface and convincing her that I am the true man for her. Alex is just looking at Ben. He's like, dude, did playing Minecraft make, make you think this or something? And Ben's like, no, it, it encouraged me to remember my true caveman days. And you know, Alex is like, yeah, okay, that's cool, man. Like, I'm cool with that. Like, you're cool. That's good. Okay, you know, actually, actually, Ben, yes. Let's see it. I will, too, embrace the caveman if Ava goes out with you because you smell bad. And Ben's like, I don't smell bad. I smell natural. If that is bad to your nose, then you have a, you, you have a bad nose. And Ben's like, or uh, uh, Alex's like, uh, all right, 
I got bad news. That that's not great. Um, that's like you'll see. Anyways, next day comes around, and Alex is sitting with his friends, and he explains like, yeah, so you know Ben, right? And they're like, yeah, we know Ben. Alex is like, yeah, so he's he's doing something crazy, and they're like. Well, I don't know what he's been doing, but he's been smelling like garbage recently. And Ben, Alex is like, it's actually, it's related. You're not going to believe this. He played Minecraft, and then he believed he had to go back to the caveman era, like he had to be a man again. And that doesn't mean working out or, you know, reading. It just means not showering for some reason. It's kind of, it's kind of ridiculous. And they're like, yeah, I mean, Ben has been smelling a little bit more musty, and it kind of smells like spoiled milk at this point. But I guess, uh, <laughs> I, I guess that makes sense now. And uh, Alex goes on to say, yeah, and you know Ava? And they're like, yeah, of course we know Ava. Hottest girl in our class, beauty, right? 10 out of 10. They're like, eh. Alex is like, yeah, so Ben is going to ask her out later today. They're like, he's going to do what? He's going to do, and, they're, and, and Alex is like, yeah, so Ben, ben thinks that because he smells like he does, she's going to instinctively say yes. They're like, dude, this, why did you say yes? Why did you allow him to go on with this? At this point, Alex's friends are like, bro, you're kind of being a bad friend of Ben. And Alex is like, dude, he was so confident. He was being so cocky. And they're like, dude, he's going to get rejected. And there's a chance he gets rejected really hard and really embarrassingly in front of everyone. Do you want that for him? And look, Alex was not happy with the way that Ben went about explaining or teaching him, quote unquote, the ways of the caveman, a.k.a. no shower, no more, right? But at the end of the day, they were still friends, and Alex knew that Ava was not just going to say no, but, you know, she had developed a bit of an ego for because she did know that she was, you know, the most beautiful girl in the class and she could have any guy she wanted. She was not going to be nice about letting him down. She was going to be cruel. She was going to be mean, and she was going to crush him, dude. She was going to freaking crush him. And Alex is like, all right, I got to find Ben. I need to find him before he asks Ava out. And as Alex was saying that, he hears, or he looks up, and he looks at the table across, because they're sitting at lunch. He looks at the table farthest away, and that's where Ava and her friends were sitting, and Ben was walking up to her table. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment uh, Minecraft down below. And if you want to support the channel, one of the best things you can do is binge watch the videos. And please let me know in the comment section what you're doing while watching these videos. And also, final thing, a bit of a new request I have. If you haven't already done so, if you have a TikTok account, go follow my TikTok. It is Connor Pugs. I have about 7,000 followers on there. Um, I'm reposting clips from here. I'm just trying to reach a new audience on TikTok and hopefully bring them to the family over on here. And if you could just, even just following me in there and occasionally watching my videos, uh, basically no one watches them on there and I need a little bit of traction from you guys to help them reach new people and I really would appreciate it. Anyways, let's get back to the story before I bore you guys. And also if you're gonna buy some gamer subs or any of their stuff, wait about a week. I have a pretty cool surprise coming for you guys. But anyways, enough of teasing that. I can't say too much right now. Anyways, right, so Alex looks over and he notices that Ben is walking to Ava's table. And he's like, oh, oh my God, no, 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 no. This can't be happening. And he goes out and he starts to like walk over and you know the people Alex, Alex was sitting with are like Alex go go he's gonna do it don't let this happen so Alex is basically sprinting over to the table but he doesn't get there in time and he kind of stops he's like no I'm too late so Ben goes up to Ava and goes ahem Ava and Ava looks up and is like yes <laughs> oh my the next part's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard Ben goes up to her and literally lifts up both of his arms. You know how, like, after you run and you're, like, really exhausted, you'll put your arms above your heads to, like, make it easier to breathe, right? Or you're told to do that or whatever, right? That's basically what he did. And you could see Ava's face. Like, first you saw her nose kind of twitch as she was smelling what was going on. And then you saw her eyes water, her face crunch up. And, and you could almost hear, like, the, oh, like, it was a bad smell. It was not good. And Alex is like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm par I'm partially respons- Oh, my God. I'm partially resp- I'm partially responsible, man. This is on me. Anyways, Ben goes on to say, so, Ava, now that, you know, I've let your senses, you know, acclimate themselves, and if you have any primal urges, wink, wink, that are coming up from, you know, the surface that are breaking through, would you like to go on a date? You know what? Let's just skip that. Would you like to be my girlfriend? And Alex is like, in his head, he's like, no, no, Ben, no, Ben, no, no, 
no. And so sure enough, you know, Ava's just looking at him, blinking. Not even responding, not laughing or anything. She's just blinking. Because she's just so dumbfounded by the... Did this kid just... Did this kid just straight up ask me out? Because remember, Ava and Ben, they're not friends. They're not dating each other. They're not close like that. W what? And he also smells terrible. And Ben is like, uh, if you don't know your answer yet, maybe you'll know it in a second. And Ben literally gets closer to her and, like, pushes his armpit in her face. And she's like, ew, get away from me, and kind of pushes him back. He's like, looks over at Alex, and Ben's like, yells over, don't worry, Alex. Don't worry. Give it a second. You'll see, man. You'll see. It's crazy. You're not going to believe it. She's going to fall in love with me. And Ava looks up, fall in love with you? I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. I just know that you're a guy who came over here and is smelling terrible and is pushing his stinky armpits in my face. No, I will not go out with you. And like at this point, everybody in the cafeteria has turned their heads. Everybody has turned their heads and is looking at this because it's a scene. It's a spectacle. I mean, Ben is standing up there with his greased out armpits and Ava, known as the prettiest girl in the class, has just demolished him in front of everyone, spectators of the entire class. And at this point, there's an awkward silence because people have stopped speaking. Like they have stopped speaking because they want to hear what's going on. And Ben is like, I see let me know if you change your mind. And Ava's like, no, I will never change my mind. As I said, she's a little extra, right? And Ben just walks over to Alex. And Alex looks at him. He's like, dude, dude, I, I was trying to come over to tell you not to do it. Like, I'm sorry. This is my fault. Ben's like, bro, this is, this is not your fault. She just needs time to realize. Like, Ben goes on to say that, you know, this is totally part of the plan. He knew that there's a chance that, you know, her, like, primal senses would be stopped by her, like, brain, but it was only a matter of time till like, they break through. And now that he's, like, broken through to the senses through, like, essencing out the stink or whatever, that, like, eventually, within, like, the next 24 hours, she will come to her senses, maybe privately, maybe not publicly, but they will be dating. And Alex is like, dude, you can't seriously think that. And Ben is like, it's my theory. Like, I know it's to be true. You have your opinions, and I have my facts. I'm sorry, I stole that from Baskets. Greatest show ever. Rip Christine Baskets, bro. Brings a tear to my eye. Anyways, um, and so sure enough, next day rolls around. It has been 24 hours. And Alex just goes up to Ben. He's like, yo. Ben's like, yeah, what's up? He's like, hey, did, did she ask you out yet? And he's like, no, it hasn't been 24 hours. Ben looks at his phone, looks at the time. He's like, dude, it's, it's been like 22 hours. <laughs> and Ben goes on to say, see, you're proving my points. Once again, my facts destroy your opinions. And Alex is like, okay, but I mean, she hasn't asked you out yet. And two hours go by. Alex goes up to him and Ben's like, dude, I don't want to talk about it. Alex is like, that's fine, man. Like, you don't have to prove anything to me. Like, I get it. Alex is like, dude, you're good. Don't worry about it. Just please go home and take a shower. And sure enough, Ben, while he actually continued to play Minecraft, no longer believed the whole caveman philosophy of you must smell like garbage for women to like you. And uh, that was partially due to the fact that it doesn't work and he has firsthand experience in why it doesn't work. And uh, yeah, him and Ava did not ever date from that point on. Um, it was a pretty bad first impression. By the way, that was a first impression practically. I think they knew of each other beforehand, but yeah. Moral of the story is, don't do that, guys. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? Hope you're having a great day today, because today we have probably one of the most insane stories about a Minecraft kid to date. I mean, you do not want to miss this, so sit back, relax, uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and let's call today's subscriber who submitted this story, uh, let's call him Dave. So anyways, right, you know, Dave was in the third grade, and in the third grade, like at this time, Minecraft was huge. I mean, Minecraft was really big now, but it was like really, really big back in like 2013, 2014. 
Dave is quite older, but this is a story from back in his childhood. So anyways, right, you know, one thing that was starting to get pretty big, 2015, 2016, I don't totally know exactly when this story happens, was something called, you know, Minecraft PvP, where basically people would fight each other in Minecraft. And there is this kid in Dave's class who we're gonna call Ben, because of course we're gonna call him Ben. So anyways, right, you know, Dave and Ben, you know, they weren't necessarily best friends, but they started to get to know each other because they both were really into the whole Minecraft Minecraft player versus player battles and so they would start to like play a little bit you know with each other after school they would go on Minecraft servers and they would fight each other and it was actually quite fun so Dave and Ben started to become friends in class and the thing is though uh, Dave was not friends with Ben after what is about to happen, which is absolutely crazy, but you'll have to wait for that one, right? So anyways, right, you know, Dave and Ben, you know, they're talking at recess. So there's out there, there's a swing set at this school's recess, uh, at this school's recess, at the school's playground. So Dave and, Sw Dave and Ben, they're both on the swings, and, uh, you know, Ben is like, man... I don't know. I really don't like Miss Davenport. So Miss Davenport's going to be the name of their teacher for their math class. And Dave's like, dude, I know she's the worst. And Ben's like, bro, like, I wish I could just like spend my entire day getting better in Minecraft PvP, like learning how to like be better. But instead, I have to spend all this time learning my times tables, bro. I hate those. Little side note, I hated my times tables because I would be like time to be like, you have to do all these in one minute. I'm terrible under pressure. I did not like those. But anyways, Dave and Ben, you know, they were talking about how they really didn't like, you know, the Minecraft, uh, the Minecraft, the, the, the math they had to do in their class and how they thought that their teacher was like extra, extra mean, even though Dave tells me me in retrospect the teacher was actually super normal like she was like honestly just trying to teach them the fundamentals of math that they would need for like the next seven years of schooling but at that time Dave and Ben the Minecraft kid they just they just didn't get that so Dave and Ben decided that you know what they were gonna pull a prank on their teacher to somehow get more time to play Minecraft so what they were gonna do is they were gonna find a way to bring their like computers into class and to play Minecraft like during class so that they can, cause like what they were thinking is Dave and Ben the Minecraft kid were like, you know what? I hate math, when am I actually gonna use it? But you know what I'm using every day? My Minecraft player versus player battle skills. Oh yeah, baby. So yeah, basically they were thinking to themselves like we gotta practice in class because we're wasting all of our time doing math. This is ridiculous. So anyways, they, they conjure up a plan and the whole plan is that they will like put their backpacks on their desk because they actually had pretty big desks and they would also sit all the way in the back of class and their backpacks would be like on the desk enough so that it would be kind of blocking their computers. Then they'd whip out their computers and, you know, they would have their mouses or whatever, and then they would play Minecraft in class, and they just, like, attach to the school Wi-Fi. This was so far back then that, like, the school Wi-Fi, like, people, like, the, the administrators in the school didn't even know about, like, how to do, like, Wi-Fi blocking. You know how, like, some, like, when you go to school Wi-Fi, you can't look up certain sites or use certain things? This was back in the day when, like, they didn't even know about this. They're just like, oh, internet connection, cool. Anyone can use it. We don't really care. It's, uh, I don't know if every school was like this, but at least D uh, Dave and uh, Ben's school was like this. So anyways, the next day rolls around and they bring their computers into school. And on, on the way out, Dave's mom was like, oh, honey, why do you have your computer with you? And, uh, you know, Dave was like, um, I need to think quick on the spot. He's like, uh, we need it for class. And Dave's mom's like, oh, cool. So anyways, Dave goes into school. He meets up with Ben before class. He's like, bro, are you ready? And Ben's like, yeah, dude, I got my, you know, I got my PC. I'm ready for this. So they go into class and they both sit in the back of the class. And the teacher's like, all right, class, today we'll be learning about long division. By the way, screw long division. That is the worst thing ever. But anyways, right, so Dave and Ben, you know, they're sitting in the back of class. They pull out their backpacks and they put them on their desk. And the teacher kind of looks over and doesn't think anything of it. She's like, weird but if you want if you want to have less desk space then be my guest bro like that's not on me that's on you so whatever and then dave and ben you know they pull out their computers and then they pull out their mice and they barely have enough room to fit everything on there but barely is still is still it you know they still have enough room even if it's barely enough room so anyways right they get their laptops out they connect to the wi-fi 
they're in, they're like, all right, this is perfect. So they go on whatever player versus player Minecraft server where they can fight each other and other people. I don't know if it was Hypixel back in the day. I don't know if it was like uh, uh, like a bad lion or whatever. I don't even know. I don't know the history that well. But they go on their server, right? And the thing about like Minecraft PvP, if you don't know, when you fight someone in Minecraft, you normally have like a sword. Normally, I mean, you can have like bow, rod, uh, lava bucket. You can have a lot of stuff. But normally it's sword fighting, and for sword fighting, you need to click. And neither of these kids have auto clickers or anything like this. So they wanted to swing their sword. They needed to click. And the thing is, right, they didn't have some kind of, like, ghost mouse that makes no sounds when you click it, which I, I don't know even if that's a thing, because, like, why would you want that? I, 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 except for this very specific situation, which doesn't come up often. Well, actually, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm not typically in class pretending to be, like, hiding behind, like, a backpack, secretly playing Minecraft, ignoring my math schools or the, my, 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 like, math class or whatever. That doesn't normally happen. But anyways, right, so the thing is, for them to play, they need to be clicking. And remember, this class isn't super loud and rowdy, and no one else is on their computers, and no one else is clicking a mouse. So they don't even really think of this. They're just like, Dave and Ben are just so excited to the fact that they're able to play Minecraft during their math class. Do they legitimately just start, they get on the server and they go Actually, I have a mouse with me right now. They just start going They just start like going crazy and they're clicking away and they're fighting people and they're doing pretty well, right? So Dave is super focused right now. He's playing this kid who's actually pretty good and they're, you know, they're really close. They're basically have the same number of hits and he hears Ben whisper, Dave, 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 Dave. And, ben, or, uh, and, and Dave's like, Ben, stop, stop. I'm in the middle of a fight. And that's when the teacher says, then he hears his name again, but he hears Dave. And sure enough, it is Miss Davenport. And he looks up and he immediately closes his computer. At this point, like Ben is like, oh my God. And Dave is like, uh, hi, Miss Davenport. Uh, how's it going, Miss Davenport? How's it going there? Ha <laughs> what's good? Miss Davenport, and sure enough, like, Miss Davenport's like, you too, you're coming with me. And they pack their bags, and they walk up to the principal's office, and they get in trouble because you're not supposed to be doing that in class. And, uh, yeah, and the principal, you know, ends up calling their parents, you know, when Dave gets back, Dave's mom's like, you were playing Minecraft, you were playing, like, video games, I don't know if she knew if it was Minecraft exactly, so, you were playing video games in class, you were supposed to be paying attention, like, you know, this is foundational material for the rest of your, like, the rest of your academic career, like, you're gonna be in college, in college math class, and you're gonna be thinking back, why didn't I pay attention to that long division, bro, I've never done long division like since seventh gr or since fourth grade, bro. Just a little tip. I mean, learn it because you need to pass, but I've never used that stuff again. Oh my God. Anyways, though, Dave is not happy. And, you know, Ben is also not happy. So the next day, you know, while they did get in trouble, they still had their recess privileges. So they went out back to the swing set and they were, and Ben was like, dude, dude, Miss Davenport is the worst. And Dave's like, bro, 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 100%. She is the worst. Even though, like, in retrospect, Dave tells me that Ms. Davenport was literally just doing her job and that Dave back then and Ben, his friend, were just a bunch of dumb kids. But anyways, at the time, Dave and Ben were like, bro, she is the worst. We need to actually get back at her for what she did to us. And Dave's like, bro, what were you thinking? And Ben's like, you know what? Last night, I was just so angry that I was sitting there and I was just trying to come up with something. I was trying to come up with an epic prank that would truly get her. So Dave and Ben end up doing something, which you guys will hear in just a little bit. That is something that I have to do a little bit of a disclaimer. Do not do this. I have personally never done it, and I actually don't know anyone who's done this. And it's also pretty illegal, and it's, it, it's, it's a jerk move, and you should never do something like this. That's just my disclaimer coming from me so I can freely tell the rest of the story. So anyways, on the swing set... Dave and Ben, since they live close to each other and they're allowed to kind of roam around, Ben's like, dude, I figured out exactly where Ms. Davenport lives last night. And Dave's like, bro, what? And, and Ben's like, dude, Ms. Davenport, she lives really close to us. Like she lives like five minutes away. And Dave's like, bro, okay, what do you want me to do with this information? And Ben's like, dude, my mom just bought eggs. 
And she probably, so much stuff goes in her fridge, she won't notice if she loses some eggs, right? And Ben's like, or Dave's like, bro, Ben, I don't understand what you're trying to say. And that's when Ben says, you and me, tonight, we're going to go egg her house for what she did to us. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment door down below. That's for the OGs of this channel. If you don't get it, that's all good. But if you've been around for a while, that probably that probably brought you back. But anyways, if you made it this far into the video, comment door down below, D-O-O-R, or the thing that like, you know, you enter a house with or a building with. Uh, I just wanna see how many people make this far into, into the video. And also, if you wanna support the channel, literally binge watch these videos, like sit down and watch a bunch of story videos in a row. It really helps me out more than you can ever imagine. And let me know in the comment section what you were doing while binge watching these videos. Are you playing video games? Are you doing some artwork? Are you gonna sleep? Whatever you're doing, let me know. I'll heart it. And I'll even sometimes throw up your comments on screen. So here are some people. Here's a little bit of a shout out to these people. If you want a bit of a shout out in a future video, just comment how you're supporting the channel and yeah let's get back to it so anyways right at this point dave and ben you know they they kind of commit to you know doing the thing that they're going to do and after school you know they they basically have a plan to tell their parents that they're going on a night uh, like a nighttime walk at like eight and then they're gonna meet up at a certain place so anyways it's like 7 55 and dave's starting to get butterflies in his stomach like, this is really crazy. He's starting to feel really, like, weird about this, but he's like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going through with it. So it's 8 o'clock. He walks out there, and he meets up with his friend Ben, and sure enough, Ben has four eggs in his hand. So they're not going to, like, you know, some gat they're not going to load up a Gatling gun with a thousand eggs and completely, like, I don't know, uh, they're not going to turn her, egg, her, her house into an omelet or anything like that, but they're still going to egg the house, which, once again, disclaimer, do not do, do not ever do. It's not even, like, cool or anything like that. You're an idiot if you do it. Anyways, because you will get in trouble, dumbass. But anyways, Dave and Ben, they start walking over, and they're hiding the eggs, right? They, they walk over to where Miss Davenport's house is, and they sneak around over, and then they hide in the bushes, right? And Dave turns to Ben, he's like, dude, are you sure about this? And Ben's like, don't forget what she did to us. And with that, Dave gets, Dave gets a little angry. He takes one of the eggs, he's like, on three. And then Ben takes one of his eggs. He's like, all right. And Dave's like, three, two, one. And then two eggs splat. And then he's like, all right, we got to fire this one quickly. They take both of them again. And sure enough, they got four eggs right across the side of the house and this time they need to get out of there so they don't run away but they kind of like power walk away and they kind of sneak out of there and they watch and they hear the door open but by that time they are out of sight so dave and ben quickly like power walk away and they go out of sight out of distance they're like oh my god <sighs> oh my god that was crazy they're like we totally got her and dave is like we totally got her and ben's like i don't know and Dave's like, dude, we totally got her. Like, how could you want to get her more? And once again, Ben's like, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know if that was enough. And Dave's like, well, that was enough for me. So sure enough, they go back, you know, they go back home. They go to bed. You know, the next day they wake up and, you know, uh, you know, they go to school and they're sitting. And, you know, once again, they go back to their, uh, their swing set. And Dave is like, man, I don't know. I just don't feel satisfied with what happened. I feel like she deserves more. And... At this point, Ben's like, bro, or Dave's like, bro, Ben, what do you mean? We got our, we got our house. We got our good. And yeah, Ben's just like, man, I don't know, Dave. Like, I just, I just don't feel like we actually did get her good. I feel like, I feel like there's still more that can be done. The right, the wrong has not been righted. And Dave's like, bro, chill out. The, the wrong has definitely been righted, which by the way, two wrongs do not equal a right, bro. But and anyways, right. So sure enough, they go back to class. And they're sitting there, and, you know, Miss Davenport calls on Ben. Ben doesn't know the answer, and it doesn't embarrass him from the whole class. But, bro, when you get called on, and you very clearly are not trying to have your hand raised because you're not trying to get called on, and the teacher calls on you in class, and everyone looks, and you turn around, and you're like, ah, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. That's embarrassing. But apparently, that was just like... That was the last straw for Ben. And as they're like, so their school is out or not school's out, but school's out for the day. They're going to, they're waiting in line to be picked up by their parents. And Ben walks up to Dave and is like, bro, I'm getting revenge on Miss Davenport for embarrassing me today. And, you know, Dave's, or Dave's like, bro, what are you talking about? 
And Ben's like, dude, she's been crazy recently. And what we did was just like, it was a, it was a little drop in the bucket. It really means nothing. But I'm going to get her tomorrow. And I'm going to use my Minecraft skills to get her back. I'm going to you put my training to good, good use. And Dave looked at him and had literally no idea what he was going to do. So he's like, okay, man, <laughs> cool. So anyways, the next day rolls around. And once again, before class, they're at recess and they're sitting on the swings. Dave and Ben always sit on the swings together. No one else really uses the swings, so they're kind of like, it's the place they always go to. And Dave is just talking, and Ben's like, bro, you're going to want to be in class today. And Dave's like, dude, of course I'm going to be in class. Like, you, <laughs> what, what would I do if I skipped it? Sit in the bathroom, dude? Like, what? Because remember, they didn't really have phones then. I mean, phones were a thing, but since they were kids, they didn't really have it. But uh, anyways, uh, Ben goes on, bro, you're going to want to be there. And Dave's like, okay, like, do you want to tell me? And Ben's like, nope, it's going to be a surprise. But just know that Miss Davenport is not going to want to mess with me or anyone else, including you, after this. And Dave's like, okay, man, cool. So they get to class. And, uh, you know, they, Dave, Dave sits next to Ben. And he looks over. And there's something's weird with Ben's bag. And, and that's when Dave realizes, you know, there's like fake plushy Minecraft diamond swords that you can buy online, like the little toy things. Yeah, one of those, the handle of that was sticking out of his, it was sticking out of his backpack. And Dave looks at Ben and is whispering like, yo, dude, why is there a, why is there a diamond sword in your backpack? And Ben's like, bro, you're going to see, dude. And Dave's like, okay, uh, what? And Dave's like, bro, just wait. It's going to be crazy. And Dave's like, all right, man, I'll trust you on this one. So sure enough, right, you know, Dave, uh, Ben is kind of just waiting to be called on. And sure enough, Miss Davenport's like, all right, Ben, can you answer this? Because she was going around just asking people. And Ben's like, Miss Davenport, I did not raise my hand. And Miss Davenport's like, well, sometimes I call on people. It's just part of the class. And Ben is like, stands up. He's like, that is the last time that you disrespect me, ma'am. And he gri reaches into his backpack and whips out his diamond sword. And Dave is like, oh, my God, this guy's gone off the rocker. And he starts swinging it around like. And uh, the, Miss Davenport's like, Ben, what is that? Like, why, why do you have, like, a little fake plastic sword or whatever? And Dave is like, you, or Ben is like, you don't understand. He starts walking towards her, swing it. Everyone in the class is dead silent. They're like, bro, this kid's gone insane. Oh, my God. But anyways, right, so Dave, or not Dave, Ben is walking towards him with the sword. Miss Davenport's like, dude. Or she doesn't say, okay, Miss Davenport, the teacher, the 40-year-old math teacher does not say dude. But she's like, Ben, put that down immediately and you're coming with me to the, you know, the principal's office. And Ben's like, no, you disrespected me and my brethren for too long. And he goes up and he's like, any last words? And, you know, Miss Dav Davenport's like, Ben, put that thing down immediately. You and I are going to the principal's office. Cut off mid-sentence. Why was she cut off mid-sentence? Well, because at that point, Ben had enough, and he swung with the diamond sword. However, he got too close to her. So when he swung with the diamond sword, he held the diamond sword in his fist so tightly that when he swung, he didn't hit her only with the diamond sword. He accidentally hit her with his fist that was clutching onto the diamond sword so tightly that he basically just square punched her in the face. And at this point, it was such like, I know he's just a little kid, but just like the shock and the momentum and just somehow he got it just right that he went, whoopa! And Miss Davenport stood there for like a second and then just collapsed on the floor. And everyone, their mouths were just gaping open. They were just like, oh. Huh? What? What? Huh? Oh, oh, what is going on? What is going on? What? And so, okay, so sure enough, one girl just runs out of the room immediately. And Ben is kind of just standing there, just kind of shocked with what happened. Because, bro, you're not expecting to knock out the teacher with your diamond sword. I don't care how delusional you are. Like, you were just not expecting that to happen. 
and you know Ben's just standing there. He's like, "Oh my god! Oh 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 my god! What I do? What I do?" And when the class is like, "Oh my god, she, is she dead? Oh my!" God. She was not dead. She was just knocked out. But within like five minutes, the girl that ran out actually ran out just to go get like help from like security or whatever. And sure enough, security walks in and they look at what's happening. They see the kid with the diamond sword and the teacher slumped over and the girl points to him and says, that's the kid. Security goes up, grabs Ben, is like, you're coming with us. And the other security officer goes and checks like Ms. Davenport's pulse to make sure that she wasn't like actually, you know, destroyed by that. And sure enough, she was fine, but like she was knocked out. They call an ambulance. Ambulance comes over. Miss Davenport starts coming back too. You know, she's given water, electrolytes, whatever. And Dave is just sitting there like, oh my, oh my God. So Ben actually gets up getting expelled from the school. He's not suspended. He's not in trouble. He's expelled from the school. They have like a zero tolerance for anything like that. However, you know, there was some questioning to Ben about like the recent like egging to her house because she did report it to the school. And Ben, thankful, Dave, thankful, like, thankful to Ben, Ben did not say anything. Ben kept his mouth shut, said he knew nothing of it, that that was ridiculous, and they didn't look any further into it. And Ben and Dave never really spoke that much afterwards because Dave's mom, like, I don't want you hanging out with Ben, he's a bad influence, and all that kind of stuff. And to this day, Dave and Ben have not seen each other since, and Dave does not know where Ben is. Ben might be at some other school. I, Dave thinks that, like, the parents moved because he actually walked over to see, like, if Ben was at his house because he wanted to like to see how he was doing. And it was like a totally different family in that house when he went over. It was kind of weird, but whatever, right? And uh, yeah, to this day, Dave has no idea what's happening and it was probably the craziest story of his life. Today I get a story time of, a, of another one of these Minecraft kids deciding to uh, fight back against his babysitter in a quite uh, unconventional way, you might say. I mean, I bet you can read the title right now. So, yeah, with that being said, sit back, relax, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's call today's subscriber who submitted this story to me, let's call him Ryan. So, Ryan was friends with this kid who really liked Minecraft. So we're calling him the Minecraft Kid because that always works in the title and uh, you guys like the Minecraft Kid stories and I like telling them. But anyways, right, Ryan was invited over to this kid who he didn't know that well and we're just going to call him the Minecraft Kid. So anyways, right, Ryan was invited over to the Minecraft Kid's house to, well, you know, play Minecraft with him. The idea was he was going to go over on a Friday night and play some Bed Wars with this kid. Honestly sounds like a pretty sick Friday night if you know what I mean. However, he didn't really know much about this kid and he only kind of just started to know him because Ryan's mom and the Minecraft kid's mom became friends like a couple months ago when they were both volunteering for something or maybe they just met. I don't know why but Ryan's mom and the Minecraft kid's mom became friends and for that reason you know Ryan's mom's like oh I I have a son about your son's age, they should totally hang out. And since Ryan knew nothing about the Minecraft kid, it, at their first like interaction, which wasn't like a sleepover play day type thing, he was like, so what do you like to do? And he's like, I like to play Minecraft. He's like, cool, do you like to play Bed Wars? And he's like, yeah, it's my favorite game. So they bonded over it. So anyways, Ryan was heading over to the Minecraft kid's house. And uh, Ryan's mom told him, hey, just so you know, uh, the Minecraft kid's mom is not going to be there. Uh, she's going to be out for something. However, they hired a babysitter, and the Minecraft kid's mom should be back by, like, 10 or 11. And Ryan was like, all right, that's totally fine. I, I don't really care. It's not like we would have been hanging out with the Minecraft kid's mom and having her play in our Bed Wars trios or something, man. So it's fine. So Ryan gets over to the Minecraft kid's house, and when he gets there... No one greets him at the door. He kind of stands there for a second and he knocks on it and he stands there for like a little more time and uh, he hears noises coming from upstairs and it's a two-story house and there's a, there's a window right above him and the window is open and he can hear noises and you know what noises he hears? He hears block placing noises. He hears a uh, golden apple eating noises. He hears bed break noises. He's like, wait a minute. Bro, the Minecraft kid is playing Bed Wars right now. 
And, uh, you know, Ryan was thinking that he would have yelled up to the Minecraft kid, but the door eventually opened, and presumably the babysitter, or who we thought the babysitter was, which, no, was the babysitter, that isn't, like, the big secret of the story, but the babysitter comes and, you know, opens the door and says, hey, so sorry, uh, Minecraft kid's upstairs, I'm, you know, making dinner right now for you guys, it'll be ready in, like, 30 minutes, so make sure you're not in the middle of the game in, like, half an hour. And uh, Ryan's like, all right, that sounds pretty cool. So he goes up the stairs, he opens the door, and the Minecraft kid's like, what's good, bro? I'm in the middle of a game. Get your, like, laptop out and set your stuff up, and we'll go into, like, doubles in just a second. Uh, and so sure enough, and by the way, guys, Bed Wars is, it's a Minecraft game where you can, like, it's fun. You should go look it up and play it, maybe. But just for context, it's a video game um, on Minecraft. But anyways, right, so he sets up his, uh, his gaming setup or whatever, he gets that all ready, and yeah, sure enough, the Minecraft kid eventually wins his game. Great work, Minecraft kid. Uh, not so great work at later the night, as you can tell by the title. But uh, yeah, anyways, Ryan and the Minecraft kid, they start playing some, uh, some Bed Wars duos. Life's pretty good. And that's until they're in the middle of a game, and it's really, really intense, right? It's getting really down to the wire. If you know a thing or two about Bed Wars, all the beds have been broken, and they're really just both of them, Ryan and the Minecraft kid, are super stacked. They have their golden apples. They have their diamond armor. Yes, they sweated to diamond armor. And the two people that were remaining were about as good as they were. And they were playing for, for all the marbles at this point, man. This was pretty intense. And that's when the babysitter yells, All right, guys, time for dinner. And the Minecraft kid's like, Well, one second yells down that and you know ryan and the minecraft kid are like all right how are we going to do this do we go in do we wait and the minecraft kid is a big fan of like camping which in a video game when you're camping that basically just means that like you're staying on defensive ground and you're waiting for the opponent to come to you which in bed wars if you're super super stacked that can kind of give you the advantage because you can always drop golems you got a hometown advantage if you have the regen thing um Camping is an okay strategy, super late game, but that also means that the game's going to be a long time. And Ryan says to the Minecraft kid, hey man, do you think we should like be aggressive and we should be the one attacking them because like, you know, our food is like dinner is ready. Do you think we should just go do that for the sake of doing that just so we can, and we'll play another game when we come back. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, like I know that we'll win. Like we have prop four diamond, they don't. They, but if we go to them, there's a chance that they knock us off, we fall while going, they fireball us over. It's just a lot more dangerous to go over. He said, we're staying here. And Ryan, who doesn't really care, he's like, all right, man, sure, we'll stay here. And then you know, a minute later, the babysitter says, guys, you don't want dinner to get cold? And the Minecraft kid's like, one second, which it wasn't going to be a second. Like It was going to be probably like five, ten minutes on average remaining of the game. And uh, so, yeah, uh, Ryan and the Minecraft kid were waiting it out. And the thing was, the other team was camping too, which basically means that they were both just collecting gear and such, and they weren't attacking each other. So then the babysitter was, you know, yelled up again, like, guys, like, come on, like, I made you something, like, I told you not to be in the middle of a game. And he's like, once again, the Minecraft kid instead of saying, hey, I'm so sorry, can we be down there in five to ten minutes? Like, I apologize. He's like... One second! He just keeps yelling down one second. And the babysitter kind of did something that uh, she probably shouldn't have. Like, it just wasn't that deep, but I think the babysitter was kind of getting mad that, you know, they just were refusing to come down when, she, you know, she was sweating out some good food or whatever. So the babysitter, what she does is she goes to the Wi-Fi routum, and yes, you can probably already guess, unplugs it and replugs it which basically if your wi-fi at least in my case whenever my wi-fi is super slow or just kind of sucks i go to the wi-fi rotom or router or whatever i go rotom what am i saying i go to the wi-fi router and i think i combine router and modem my fault i go to i go to my wi-fi router or box unplug it replug it wi-fi is down for like five minutes but then it comes back nice and fresh and clean however the wi-fi goes down so basically right ryan and the minecraft kid are in the middle of a match and like they start like you know they start to go to like buy something from the store and ryan's clicking on it but it's not registering it and ryan's like dude Dude, 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 I, I think I'm disconnecting. And at this point, right, if you disconnect, you lose. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, no, it's not working. Why can't I place blocks? Why are things not registering? And then both at the same time, they get a message, like, ki not kicked, but like, uh, 
it, it disconnects from Hypixel, like no connection. And the Minecraft kid's like, no! Started slamming his fist. And Ryan, who doesn't really care, and it looks at the Minecraft kid, and the Minecraft kid was like, I was on a 99 win streak. I, w I won 99 games in a row. I was going to go to 100. I've been recording the whole thing. I was going to clip it and post it on YouTube, man. I was about to get 100. <laughs> Basically, he was pretty upset. So Ryan and the Minecraft kid, Ryan just looks at the Minecraft kid and be like, all right, man, I'm so sorry. Like, we'll grind it out tonight. We'll get you back to at least halfway, which was a lie. They were not going to play, nevertheless, win 50 games in a row. But, you know, Ryan's just trying to calm the air. And he's like, yeah, man, don't worry. We'll get back to it. So they walk down and the babysitter is waiting there. And she's like, guys, like, I asked you to come down. If you weren't going to come down, you should have at least told me. And I would have put it back in the stove. Now the food is cold. It really took me, you know turning off the Wi-Fi to get you guys to come down. Teenagers these days, or not teen, I guess, it's she, she's a teenager, she's the babysitter. I guess pre-teens these days. And that's when Ryan is like, oh my God, she turned off the Wi-Fi. That's why we froze in the game. And Ryan looks over at the Minecraft kid, whose face, he, he just stood there. Like he's been frozen by like a, a, a spell that turns you to stone. He's just frozen there, looking at her. Her His like jaw starts to slack a little bit, like, oh my god. Oh my god, it was you. It was you who got in between me and the 100 Bed Wars win streak. Real quick comment, Minecraft, if you made it this far into the video, is that will be the secret word of the day. And if you want to support the channel, as always, just go ahead and binge watch several videos or a bunch of videos whenever you have the time. And let me know, let me know in the comments if you do do this, because it really does support me more than you can probably even imagine. It boosts the channel. YouTube likes watch time anyways. So right now, remember, Ryan and the Minecraft Kid just lost in a very important game for the Minecraft Kid. He almost got a 100 win win streak, which is pretty, pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. But unfortunately, the babysitter, who kind of like overreacted a little bit, got mad and unplugged the Wi-Fi, and that made them lose the game. But they probably were actually going to win. And so when they walk down, they have no idea that the babysitter was the reason why they lost the game until the babysitter is like, oh, guys, like, I really had to pull the Wi-Fi plug to get you guys down here. Like, crazy how, t like, preteens are these days or kids on their phones too much. Like, when that, like, old man behavior type thing, even though this girl was, like, 17 or something. And the Minecraft kid is just so angry. He's like, you, you're the reason I lost my Minecraft game. And she's like, sorry, like, uh... Should have come down faster or should have at least told me. And she goes to sit down and Ryan is also like, all right, well, this is going to be a little awkward, but whatever. I'm still going down to sit down, like whatever. Like he's not going to react that ridiculously. Um, how do I say this? Yeah, no, he acted ridiculously. The Minecraft kid waits until the girl sits or the babysitter she's 17 i guess she's still like a girl i guess she is on i i get i don't know she waits till the babysitter right sits down and when the babysitter sits down the minecraft kid runs up to her grabs a chair st this is like the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard grabs a chair turns around pulls down his pants and rips rips up <laughs> dude I'm 19 years old, and I'm telling you about Minecraft Kid revenge farting in someone's face. I'm doing it. I'm going through with it. I, I'm already so... I, I'm too far in the story to, to turn around. The Minecraft Kid, after getting on the chair, ripping down his pants, farts in the babysitter's face, directly her eye while it was open. If you don't know, the reason why the fart smells bad, because there's a lot of gross particles in it. And when the gross particles get into your eye, your eye can get infected, and it can be really bad. So the babysitter legitimately falls out of her chair and starts like screaming cuz like the <laughs> cuz apparently he really ripped one. He really ripped one, man, and her eye was open and it was really close. And uh Ryan was like, "Well, so this kid and I have one thing in common. We like bed wars, and we have nothing else in common, and this will probably be the last time I ever hang out with him." And, uh, yeah, so the babysitter's like, what did you do? Why would you do that? Like, that's so ridiculous and disgusting. Like, ah, oh, my eye, it burns. <laughs> what?
<laughs> oh my god. Oh my eye. It burns. Like why would why would you do that? Like oh, oh, oh. And Ryan looks at the Minecraft kid, and the Minecraft kid is literally laughing. He's like, <laughs> and Ryan's like, oh my god, this, this kid's is because the thing was Ryan's thinking to himself. Dude, this kid must do this all the time because, like, you're not just going to think to yourself, wow, I'm so angry at this person. Let me wait until they sit down, grab a chair, stand on it, turn around, pull down my pants, and fart directly point blank into their face. That's just not something that comes to you in the heat of the moment. That I, I mean, maybe. Maybe I'm just built different from all you guys. I really don't know. But that definitely doesn't come to me. But uh, sure enough, right, uh, the babysitter eventually gets up and Ryan and the Minecraft kid look at her face, and her left eye is red and swollen. And Ryan's like, oh my god, that is definitely not a coincidence. And the babysitter is like, move out of my way. And she moves past both of them, goes and finds the home phone, because I guess her phone wasn't on or something, and legitimately calls 911, an ambulance. Which, okay, that was maybe a little excessive, but maybe I wouldn't drive if my eyes were impaired and I thought that they were going to be infected and it would have been bad. And she walks back into the room and she's like angry, but also very clearly in pain, right? And she's like, her hand is over her eye and she's like, you, like, why would you do that? And the Minecraft kid's like, well, I was actually on a 99 win streak and you pulled the plug, and I lost my 99 win. She's like, and you projectiled all your stuff out of your butt. Oh, God. How can I, how can I have a straight face and tell the story? A anyway, she's like, and you probably gave me a raging infection. My eye burns. Like, uh, if I lose sight, I'm suing your fan. She was getting mad. And eventually, right, the ambulance has come. She explains the ridiculousness of the situation. The guy, uh, she, I mean, she's put, she sits in the ambulance, drives to the hospital. Um, they check her out or whatever. But remember, this is from Ryan's perspective. So we don't exactly know what the doctor says. Ryan's mom, who got really invested in the situation afterwards, said that, like, the doctor's, like, her, her eye is fine now. But the doctor said that, like, it really could have gone south if she didn't go there, like, immediately, which is insane. So anyways, right, uh, Ryan and the Minecraft kid are legitimately just... In this house alone, and that's when the Minecraft kid's mom comes back early, super angry and upset, because the babysitter sent a message to, you know, his mom explaining everything and why that she, he, she had to leave the premises immediately. So the Minecraft kid's mom had to leave whatever she was doing to come back, and she was like, walks in, she's like, you, turns to the Minecraft kid, like, you did it, you pulled a... <laughs> You pulled a face fart on someone again. We've already talked about this. And Ryan, who is still there, he's already, by the way, he's already texted his mom to come pick him up. Um, is just like, again? I mean, he had a sneaking suspicion that this was not a first time thing. As I said, in the heat of the moment, you don't think to, you know, use your butt as a weapon. But he's like, again? This is a thing? And the Minecraft kid's like, but mom... I was on a 99 Bed Wars win streak. And she's like, that's enough. No more Bed Wars for you forever. And my kid's like, man, no, no, mom. I promise I won't fart in anyone else's face again. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Anyways, right, so Ryan's mom comes and Ryan's mom's like, hey, so sorry. Things were weird today. Like, I'm just going to pick Ryan up. Thank you so much for having him over. Ryan, come with me now. And, you know, Ryan walks over and goes in the back seat of the car, and Ryan's mom is like, so, do you want to elaborate on, I need to pick you up right now, my friend farted in the babysitter's eye, and now she's at the hospital? And Ryan did elaborate, and it really didn't add any clarity to the situation. In fact, Ryan's mom just became more Click confused. on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today I got a pretty crazy story for you guys. It's about a Minecraft kid that gets so angry and jealous of the subscriber that he actually smashes his computer in front of everyone to get quote-unquote revenge. Uh, don't worry, karma does get him. Uh, but anyway, subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into this. So we're going to call today's subscriber who submitted the story, Brendan. Uh, by the way, if the, if the gameplay for Bed Wars really sucks in the background, I recorded it a month ago. I'm pretty better now. But anyways, we're calling this guy Brendan who submitted this story. So anyways, Brendan 
was in class or was in the same grade as this kid who we're going to call the Minecraft kid because his entire identity was being a, was kind of like around being super great at Minecraft player versus player battles. He was known as the one who was so great. So anyways, right, people just called him Minecraft kid. But anyways, there's also a girl who we're going to call Haley. Because uh, that may or may not be the, the girl I'm trying to marry in Stardew Valley right now. I gave her the bouquet. I'm winning, guys. Anyway, great game, by the way. I should stop getting distracted. Watch time will be bad. Anyways, there's this girl who we're going to call Haley. And both Brendan and the Minecraft kid had an interest in her. The difference was Brendan actually talked to her. Little pro tip for getting the ladies from the Connor Pugs YouTube channel. Number one dating advice YouTube channel on all of YouTube and the internet. Talk to... If you want to get to know them, talk to them. Th yes, believe it or not. Wow. But anyways, right, Brendan actually talked to Haley, and they were getting along pretty well, and the Minecraft kid literally never did. The Minecraft kid thought that his magical and powerful skills at Minecraft would literally just be so great and so wonderful and so enticing to the women, right, that uh, he, would, he wouldn't have to talk to Haley to make her fall in love with him. She would just see his epic PvP Bed Wars abilities, and she would be like, "Oh my God, I'm so I'm not I'm not thrown in that joke. Never mind. I I, I got a family friendly audience on here. I forgot." Anyways, right, so uh, Brendan, or the Minecraft kid was aware that Brendan was probably also trying to go for Haley because Brendan was talking to her all the time. It kind of the word around the like kind of the word on the street was that you know. Brendan and Haley, oh my god, they're gonna be a thing soon, dude, they're in sixth grade, like, that's, that's how it goes, oh my god, are they gonna get to fifth base, aka holding hands, oh my god, it, a, anyways, right, so the Minecraft kid comes up to Brendan one day, and remember, Brendan and the Minecraft kid aren't necessarily boys, in fact, they don't even know each other that well, but the Minecraft kid is like, so, I see that you're trying to court Haley. And, and Brendan's mind, he's like, bro, this is 20-whatever, right? I think this story was a little old. I'm not sure. I actually don't know when this story happened. It was submitted to me on my Instagram. You can go follow it. You should go follow it. Anyways, Brendan's thinking to himself, did this guy just say court? Like, it's literally the 21st century. Are you serious? And then the Minecraft kid goes on to say, I offer you, like, I offer you, like, a quest. Or I, 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 I ask you that we duel in Minecraft to decide who will get Haley's hand in dating. And, uh, I mean, Brendan was kind of just like, in his head, he's like, all right, well, first of all, I'm not dating her. Second of all, the winner of a Minecraft PvP battle is not going to decide who she decides, right? It's not up to them. This isn't like, I don't know, the barbaric era of like, oh yeah, like, uh, I actually have, like, all men have control, women have no say. Like, oh, I want to marry you, so you're marrying me. And also, I don't think there ever was an era where you did PvP battles to decide who was, like, you know, who would marry the girl. I'm better at Minecraft, I get all the women. Nah, this, that's never been true. It doesn't matter what parallel universe or anything like that you go into, man. I am sorry, Minecraft sweats. I am so sorry. But Brendan, who kind of knows that, you know, he's going to be getting with Haley anyways, uh, thinks to himself, all right, well, this will be kind of funny, like, whatever, man, who cares? So Brendan says, sure, we'll do a PvP battle to decide who gets Haley's hand. Because he's kind of laughing, he's kind of goofing, but the thing is the Minecraft kid takes it super seriously. He's like, yes, you fool, don't you know that I am super great at Minecraft? <laughs> and uh, Brendan's like, oh, chill out, bro, like... All right, all right, yeah, we'll, we'll PvP fight to, to, to decide who gets Haley's hand in marriage. Lol, like, okay. So sure enough, the Minecraft kid is like, all right, tomorrow at recess, we go to the table. Basically, at their school, there was a table where if kids wanted to bring in their computers, if they were in the sixth grade or higher, they could, and they could play on them. I, I, I know at my school, you weren't even allowed to have your phone out, but I guess each school's a little different. So basically, right, the next day rolls around, and Brendan and the Minecraft kid, they both bring their gaming setups, which I guess both of them have laptops, because I play Minecraft on a laptop, man. I don't have a, I don't have a desktop. That's I want to be able to move my thing around. But anyways, right, they both bring in their computers, and Brendan just has a kind of a crappy MacBook Air. And this is coming from someone who 
uh, up to my first 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, I got all my Minecraft gameplay from my MacBook Air at like 20 frames per second, so I understand the struggle, bro. I get it. So anyways, Brandon comes in with his crappy MacBook Air, and the Minecraft kid comes in with his like, uh, I don't know, his Alienware $3,000 super gaming laptop with his uh, super fancy keyboard, and it takes him like five minutes to get his setup all perfect. He's like, all right, I'm ready. And uh, so sure enough, uh, you know, they both sit down and Brendan is like, all right, so how are we doing this? And uh, the Minecraft kid is like, all right, we're going to play one game of, uh, of, of Bed Wars. Yeah, Bed Wars. And, you know, Brent, at first Brendan was like, bro, how are we going to do that? But then the Minecraft kid said that he had the like MVP++ rank on Hypixel, which Hypixel is a server that lets you play Bed Wars, which is the game I was playing in the very beginning. And if you have plus like MVP++, you can make private games where it's just you and your friends. So anyways, um, the Minecraft kid, you know, sent a dual request to Brendan or a Bed Wars party, whatever. Anyways, all you got to know is they were playing Minecraft and they were playing Bed Wars and it was just them. It was just... Brendan and the Minecraft kid in a game. And uh, sure enough, they enter the Bed Wars game and, you know, they, you know, they're doing the stuff you do in Bed Wars, put down the bed defense. And you know what happens? Um, uh, Brendan is at middle. He's gathering emeralds, which is a good material to get. However, you know, his bed was exposed or he wasn't at his bed. He saw a bed destroyed message, which basically means in Bed Wars, if your bed breaks, you will not respawn. So sure enough, the Minecraft kid had like, I don't know, God bridged over with his crazy 10,000 clicks per second mouse, definitely using vape or something, but whatever, man. And so sure enough, you know, the, the Minecraft kid comes to middle and Brendan and him, they show down for a PvP fight. They're gonna decide who gets Haley, even though Brendan knows that one, he's not good at Minecraft and the Minecraft kid is, and two, this will not decide who gets Haley. This is hilarious. He just did it because it's funny, lol. So anyways, they enter their PvP battle, and they go in, and Brendan loses because he is just simply worse. And the Minecraft kid, after, you know, hitting, you know, Brendan enough times with a sword that he dies, is like, yes, Haley is mine! And everyone, because remember, it's recess time, because... Dude, they had, like, re I don't know if it's called a recess, but they had, like, a break period. Um, so everyone was kind of around there, and a bunch of kids turn around and are kind of like, uh, what, wh what, huh? It, 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 are, are you okay, sir? And sure enough, the Minecraft kid is like, you fool, you should never have dueled me for Haley's hand in dating in Minecraft. You should have known by my reputation that I would have absolutely slapped you. <laughs> And Brendan looks at him with his face of like, yeah, man, ah, that sucks. Wow, that is just too bad. This kind of reminds me of the first season of Parks and Rec, if you saw that, where uh, this isn't really a spoiler, but uh, Andy really wants to get his girlfriend back, so he like offers like a, a pool game with this guy named Mark, who disappears after season one. I, I don't know, maybe the actor wanted to do something else, and he's kind of like, oh yeah, I'll bet Anne, the, the girlfriend of Mark at the time, on this pool game. And Andy wins, he's like, yes, she's mine! But uh, reality sits in, it kind of kicks in, and he's like, wait, Huh? But I won her fair and square. Same thing here. So the Minecraft kid is still like, I don't know, Fortnite, uh, W, like, de doing the little dances, doing the L dance, doing the little other cringe stuff. He's like, hey, 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 Haley is mine. I didn't even have to talk to her, and she's gonna be my girlfriend. I'm gonna go to 10th base and hold her hand. <laughs> and, and Brendan, at this point, is, like, really trying to hold back a smile. He's like, all right, this is so funny, dude. Don't blow it. Don't make it apparent. Uh, and he's like, yeah, man, you totally, oh, man, I can't do this. I, you totally won. You to, I can't do this. Man. He's, just, he's, he's really trying to do it. He's like, yeah, you totally won Haley's hand in, in dating because you beat me in Minecraft. Yep, that's totally what happened. Holding back the laughter, holding back the tears at this point. And uh, sure enough, right, Brendan's like, all right, man, go ahead. And he's like, yes. I'm I'm gonna tell everyone about my victory dance so that you know that so everyone knows that you lost to me in Minecraft and that's why Haley is mine. <laughs> the Minecraft kid runs away, uh, to go tell his other, okay friends. Well, I don't know about that. I think his friends 